So, um, AMD is the greatest archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I have seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library? Welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be looking at the, your work, your hard work that you have posted in the global real animator community on Facebook. But um, before I go and say hello to the people who have made themselves known in the chat, um, we're going to do a little bit of drawing and animation at the start. I'm going to shake up these uh, review streams a little bit. Uh, rather than me just drawing pretty pictures, we've done enough of that. Why don't... I've noticed that there's been a strange fascination for animating head turns. I don't know what it is. Whenever I make an animating head turn video, people seem to get excited. Like in, in, in like two days, 4,000 views. Like what is it about a head turn <laughs> that people like? So why don't I do my, my channel a favor <laughs> by starting these streams off by saying, okay, pick a character, any character, Providing it's uh, hand-drawn or 2D, I mean, I can do a CG one as well, but uh, I'd rather not. Pick a character, I'll Google it, just like we did last time. Rather than me Googling it and making a drawing of it, I'll Google it and do the old head turn animation with it, okay? And then that'll be the first uh, 40, 45 minutes, half hour or so of the stream. And uh, and then we'll uh, we'll then go into the global Facebook community and look at your work. Yeah, the, the, the head turn videos art by Galen. Galen is online. Sorry, that has to be said before I say anything to him. The head turn videos are 
are turning heads. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Okay, so let us, while you're suggesting your character for me to do the animation head turn, okay, um, I will say hello just to let the suggestions pop up. We've got two suggestions. We've got Bugs Bunny and Yzma, but people can suggest whatever, okay, and whichever one tickles my fancy, I'll go and animate that. Uh, we've got Mute Midori Hernandez or Mute Midori Animations. Uh, stick around if you can, Mute Midori, or if you have to go, uh, come back because we're going to look at your post in the group in the uh, group later today. You posted a little guitar animation or something. Uh, Cameron Allen Davidson Black, how are you, the adorable Kitchikat? Uh, Mr. Leon, hola to you. Mojo Artoons, hi MB, the same, I'm the same Mo Jr. I start my new YouTube, YouTube channel which will focus on hand-drawn animation. Good luck to you. Dylan Royer, how are you doing? There of course is my compadre art by Galen. Uh, she's working on a cover for her energy drink. Chicken Scratching, how are you? Dylan Royer says Bugs Bunny. Mr. Leon says Yizma. Um, uh, Art by Galen knows what I like. He says Merlin. Um, I've been watching your older videos, Art by Galen, says Chicken Scratching. Okay, so we have just got Merlin, Yizma, and Bugs Bunny. Well, I'll tell you what. Um... Why don't I look at Yzma since it's the one I like the least, <laughs> okay? <laughs> um, Yzma is the one that I like the least. I'm not a fan of Emperor's New Groove. Yes, it has some nice animation in there, but I don't like that kind of insincere bullshit. But anyway, it's uh, some people think that that's all animation should be. So let us do uh, Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. Um, Yzma Emperor's New Groove. That was supposed to be Disney, but of course Disney stopped uh, having any faith in their own identity or brand and decided trying to uh, design like other people and copy other people when they did this movie. So never mind. Okay, let's uh, let's do a Yzma head turn. So I'm going to look at look for maybe a profile of Yzma's head. Um, or I'll have to work it out if I can't find one. That's just smart bad. Um, give me, just, just bear with me while I go looking for, okay. That is a Yzma. Okay, that's all I need. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, let us, that's all I need. This is going to be a piece of piss. Right, okay, so let us save that head turn image and let's open that image so i've got some rough i just needed to see her profile that's all i needed i didn't really need a profile but okay this will be fun yeah these are nice rough drawings actually all right well i did say that i like the character least but it's a nice drawing i'll give it that so it's a nice drawing, just not my kind of Disney. All right. Um, don't really understand the hat, but we'll put her in that hat. Okay, that's uh, that's some kind of hat. Okay, so I've got some kind of image. Okay, so um, you AMB will be in the animation post running after the main characters oh that's right i was i was going to be in mute midori animations uh project i can't wait to see i mean i have aged since then but hopefully not too much so i'll still look look pretty much the same as as your design um right uh let's let's do it let's animate a head turn so let's animate the yizma head turn so let's just get rid of my head turning face um uh which let's turn on the mic let's turn on the mic and let's uh let's let's do this piece of cake all right um yeah that'll be interesting 
Um, let's start with the profile of her head. So let's have her. Now I've got a rough Yzma model sheet here, right? And that's all I need, really, right? So we're gonna have this this rather bad bad interpretation of Mark Davis's M Maleficent. Oopsie, did I did I give away my real feelings of this character? Never mind. Okay, so we're gonna have this. Uh, like this with a eye shape here like that right so that's gonna be my first use my head okay it's a nice drawing it is a nice drawing right so we'll have this here like that um i don't really have the hat on i'll do the hat last because the hat isn't in my reference image right so we have that now, what will we make her do? Let's do a straight ahead head turn, okay? With this character. Um, all right. So now she's going to look into this expression. Mm -hmm. So she's going to turn like this right you see the the whole diamond shape we've got travis the inch around my on line he loves the amb uh head diamond he does old travis so let's have her suddenly come into this view like this we need to think about that chin shape being solved but never mind um she's got I can work out the hat while I go, right? So she's got some kind of plumage there like that, right? Probably have that come back up on itself. And she's got some kind of plumage here, right? So I can come back here and and rethink this key, right? So maybe I'll move that there like that. Yeah. There we go. Let's uh, let's sort this hat out while we're at it. Okay, so if let's put some space between that and this um so let's have this this will be like this can it turn that way we'll see let's just turn it this way yeah doesn't really help the profile much but we'll sort it out later on all right let's just change this it doesn't have to stick to the model sheet all right so she'll look up here like that all right then we will have her turn her head into this bow's hair all right We'll open her mouth, right? Oh yeah, this this is so hard. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right, um, I like to boast because it sets an example. All right. Why am I online? Because I show you how to do this stuff. All right. It's not as hard as you think it is. Just join the Real Animator Training Library, and you'll do will be able to do this stuff, right? So already, already we can see just how damn good that is. All right, so um, now uh, we are going to, um, before we do that, we're going to change up a little, right? Um, we're going to play with the expression, okay? So we're going to change a bit of the timing here. Mm -hmm. Jum 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 jum. Right. So it's going to have something here like this, looking this way. Bum, 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 right then I'm gonna turn this way right let's already solve the breakdown right 
let's then have something like this right like that there we go Whee! right zoom 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 you can see her head's getting slightly small but it doesn't matter uh, up, up, um. right uh i'll come and have a look at the chat in a minute right so we have already we've got something like that um right so yeah now let's put a nice little bit of character at the end of it let's close her mouth and people think this is hard okay right so now we're going to close her mouth um that's a good expression to use right there we go let's close her mouth like this of course it's only hard if you haven't done the right training right hint hint nudge nudge <laughs> right so here we go like this bum, bum, bum. got to ask yourself if you can't do this look at who you're learning from and ask yourself is it really working right and then watch this and understand this guy can do it and this guy is telling you how bloody easy it is right okay so that's the head that's that's the, my basic uh, head turn right oh 16 minutes okay we've already done the bare bones of the hard work which most people wouldn't understand the the spacing or the favors in there am i being a little bit arrogant am i making like you feel uncomfortable well good because i'm giving you the real techniques and how to do this join my course and you've got it it's not hard okay it's it's wasting your life learning f shit from people that ain't teaching you right that's what should be hurting you not my comments right so this is this right let's um let's start drawing this character in now i'm gonna pick my poses now let's talk about how to maintain form and volume all right and i am going to give you the the uh, uh, the truth here about keys extremes okay so let's start with our extremes let us do our first extreme which is our pose notice i'm not using the word key okay i'm using the word extreme right now i'm not going to spend too long trying to get all nice clean lines here because that's not what this is about but i'm going to get the character looking like the character and it's going to look absolutely stunning but it's just not going to be really clean right um so let's get her eyes in there right so now her nose is going to come out i like this nose design she has got a nostril now i'm working with the model that i found online right from the model sheet now i don't know if this is an earlier yzma to be honest i've only seen this film twice and i almost slept through the second time i saw it so um i'm not a fan so i honestly can't remember you know if how accurate this uh this model is right so but it's a nice it's a draw drawn by an extremely high level individual so whatever it is you're getting you're getting a nice head turn if it's not the final model i don't know i don't remember her having a nose like that but anyway, right, so let's uh, put in the uh, chin, right, like that. And let's get the eye up here like this. Zoom, 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 zoom. See, the most important thing is, is that you learn, right? I don't care if you like me or 
you know, I'm not here to make you like me. I'm here to get you good at animation, right? That's that's why you're watching this thing. If you want a friend, go buy a dog, right? If you don't like what I'm saying, turn off and then go back to not being able to do anything, right? Um, I'm here to show you how to animate and how to do it properly. Right, now she's got a big earring here, so I may need to put some follow through overlap and drag into that, right? Now, I'm gonna save her hat till last because I don't quite understand her hat. Um, so I'm gonna look at what, she's got some feathers on her neck, right? I'm looking at some images now, her hat doesn't actually, um, her hat doesn't actually, what's the word, fit in the screen of the thing that I'm looking at, right? So I'm going to have to just improvise a little bit. Now all these feathers are high behind her head on here, but in the model sheet, they're low down here. So I'm just going to keep them low down here like that, right? That's what I'm going to keep this as like that, right? Maybe I can put a few, I'll, I'll put them up here. It's not hard, right? We'll do something like that, right? So her neck is here. She's got these feathers coming out of her neck, right? And then all these feathers are kind of around her head like that. And the hat, the hat's uh, just got one on this side, but then she seems to have two. So maybe the thing I'm looking at on the model sheet isn't quite this, right? But I'm just going to go with what I've got here. So she's got one thing coming down and around. Okay, well that makes my life easier than the two, right? So let's just have that, right? Something like that, right? Now that gives me a rough idea of what to do with the first frame. Now to do the last frame, right? So I'm going to go ahead and animate the last frame. So we are working on an extreme basis, right? So let me find the model sheet, the face that I was looking for. Yes, that's the face I was looking for, right? I think before I do that one, I will do this one. So I'm going to consider this to be more of an extreme than that one, right? Although that's the last pose, I find I'm going to put this one as my extreme. Um, because, simply because, um, I have a better model reference, which I can then animate out of into my final key, right? So now let's turn that on let's get rid of the next panel no next panel right so the first virtually these two frames here right so now we're gonna have her her head is up like this right now I'm gonna show you a good way of managing this volume thing in what we call shift and trace right we can look at the head together but and I could flip it forwards and backwards like that. Um, but it really doesn't matter because I've, it's like I've got this frame and I've got another, I've got it, I've got it somewhere else. So if I'm that worried about die down and volume, I can place this drawing here, right? And I can start looking at the two more like this, right? So this is what they call shift and trace. Now shift and trace is useful if you're working fast and you're wanting to get your extremes, uh, your volumes tight on your extremes and you're tying stuff down. A lot of assistants use shift and trace, right? Um, 
and all these kind of things. The problem with people who use, when you use it too much, is you're using it for stuff that's close together, right? Um, and you shouldn't, because when you're using it for stuff that's super close together, um, unless it's like a, a, a really subtle arm move or something, right? You're literally going to end up um, with badly bad arcs, which will lead to, you know, that's why anatomy is so important when you animate, right? Because you have to understand the, the locomotion of bone structure, the joint manipulation and all that. And that's how the body moves at the correct arcs, right? So when you do those kind of things um, and you're not thinking about the arc and the, 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 the rotation of the joint, the relevant joint that you're supposed to be using, and you're thinking more about or the volume of the thing, that's where you start to screw up with your um, with your arcs and you start getting what we call warping on your drawing so rather than maintaining volume you're losing volume you understand right so it's very important when I show you this I always advise the real animated training people against place and trace or shift and trace because it is the harbinger of bad habits because people tend to uh, avoid the necessary work and acquisition of knowledge that they need to acquire uh, to have in order to get good at animation right so you see the squash and stretch in the the mouth is really rather nice here right um, and then you start not relying on movements and you start animating like these children on YouTube who just start to just pivot and rotate and free transform and then it becomes less about skill understanding drawing and more about just you know you may as well just get your little 2d rig your little puppet out and create that awful 2d puppetry right so we've got this hair and the head is going to be coming back on it like that now I can think about this hat shape. Now the ear, I don't quite make out the ear from this model sheet, but this is good enough. I think we're all getting a nice enough drawing and we're all learning, right? I don't need to, you know, we've got lots to do in this stream. I'm going to be helping people with their work. So, right, so now I'm going to it doesn't really matter where I put this as long as it's it doesn't have to as long as it's I'm going to now think more about the model of this thing so that these things will have turned the other way now I'm gonna be very loose and light with them because uh, the actual I'm not going to be so loose and light with the, the these feathers here because they, they, they really don't matter. They're just like a plumage of feathers around the back. But in relation to the earring, right, I'm just going to put that there like a placeholder uh, because I need to go back and get, get the follow through overlap and drag properly working, which it may it may or may not have done so here, right? So I'm going to take this head like this back here and I'm going to think of it as doing something like this, right? But it's not necessarily the case because I'm going to go back and rub rub that out and do a make sure that my follow through overlap and drag is correct on that. Right? So now that this part of the hat is going to be something like that all right so we have that all right um now i'm gonna cut that and i'm gonna put that right there right now that's actually a lot higher that's higher like that so we have that right so what do we have at the moment right we've just got Two of them sorted, right? 
bum 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 right and I have missed an important aspect of the character here those bag under the eyes so we've at the moment we've got that now what I can quickly top off here is the settled position which I'm going to look at this head here to do that right so I can quickly get this one now now I can work between this and this right so we've got the eye which is going to then go into this shape like this right and it's all about the squash and stretch of the character right that's you know that's another thing so everything that you're seeing me doing here very quickly right it's all the laws of animation right and i always talk about animation law so what really makes this animation look good even though it's rough is gonna and alive is the 12 laws of animation working in complete and total harmony with one another right so we have got the six laws of movement right which is essentially arcing timing slowing in not slowing in slowing out. yes arcing timing slowing in slowing out um, solid drawing right uh, pose to pose and straight ahead so you've seen me block out this thing in a kind of straight ahead manner now you're seeing me kind of posing to pose it together right using my extremes and my keys right so and then there'll be follow through overlap and drag and a bit of squash and stretch which is one of the laws of life right so then we're talking about the six laws of life right so those six laws of life squash and stretch primary and secondary action anticipation right um staging exaggeration appeal um so these are the six laws of um life which are extremely important to getting uh this stuff correct all right very very important to getting this stuff um working all right so yes I'm giving you an overview here of those laws. I'm giving you a demo of those laws in effect, right? What's actually happening, how you can see those laws being utilized, right? And come in here and sort out that hat. As I said, I'm going to keep this quite rough because we've got a lot to do in the stream, but it's 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 tidy enough for you to see it being animated as it should be right um so then here we're going to lower that down and then we're going to think about i'm going to play with these feathers a little bit more and find my way with the design with that there's going to be some of these feathers here i'm going to come back here and the more and more confident i get with the feathers on the the body the more and more I can start to improve improve them as well. So I'm kind of finding my way. So like she's going to turn her head and then this thing is going to, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to live like, I'm just going to relax that down like that and just suggest that because the law of follow through overlap and drag will have to be added there. All right so we've just got three drawings left to do um, but at the moment we've got something like that all right all right something like that now let's go in and start to we're gonna break it down we're gonna put in some breakdowns as well right don't think that i'm not gonna make this 
it already is awesome but don't think i'm not going to make it even more awesome right so um yeah let's use this one let's have a look at this head on the model sheet right so we're gonna we're gonna bring her head up and around like this right so we've got her eye here like this so she will have noticed something i don't know we're just playing just playing so again here we're using anticipation right immediately as i put in the head turn i think about life i don't don't just think about basic mechanics like basic arc what you learn in the very beginning we we, we the reason this this head turn looks and feels so right is because um i'm putting in anticipation right and i'm also gonna combine that anticipation with secondary action right so um which is putting in a bit of the character's personality in there right so we've got the nose which is now this kind of thing oopsie so her nose right it's just a triangle and then they create this effect in there like that nice right so we have something like this then the foremouth comes down over it right like that so again one of the reasons i can just go and pick a character any character at random at your suggestion and just animate it is because i know the secret formula all right i know and understand the secret formula to being able to animate anything without difficulty any way you want right the secret science of shape simplification that's what it's all about but it's not just the secret science of shape simplification. It is animation law as well. You can have all the, the, the knowledge of shape simplification till the cows come home. You'll be able to draw very well, all right? But what about making that thing move? What about bringing that thing to life, right? So it's a harmony of everything right a mastery of everything and this is what real animated training brings to you right real animated training brings to you a complete and total understanding of animation law the secret science of shape simplification so that you are able to understand so i'm gonna think i'm gonna think about her shoulder line before i and then I'm going to think about her, what these plume, plume of feathers will be doing, right? And then I'll like maybe start attaching my own kind of like plumes of feathers around there like that. So now I'm slowly working out these feathers with my own science of shape simplification, right? And then I'll start to think about them working in harmony. I'm going to come back and do different follow through overlap and drag principles on her. On these areas here. But maybe not too much. Maybe I'll just focus more on the head as I'm progressing. I'm thinking about what is important to the stream. What's not important to the stream. Right. So as this comes up. I'm going to think about this turning. So this will effectively this will pretty much stay as is right so this this literally shape simplification this girl's around here this girl's around here right they're gonna join together at some point but then we're gonna add another little girl on there like that right so that's that's how we solve that um let's delete that out yeah, I'm going to leave the body as is because I want to get through. I just want to get through this. Um, 
if you want to see more stuff like this uh, then just keep sharing my channel and then I will explain more in detail about elements like the body and slow down a little bit for you because I do have a lot to do on this stream today we're gonna be looking at people's work later on but right now um, so I'm just gonna focus on the head maybe these two colors not gonna worry too much about the plume of feathers we're just gonna keep that as an outline like that right um, right so we've got this 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 so now we're gonna throw in some secondary action so the anticipation is up here now we're gonna throw in some secondary action bum, bum, with the way that she looks and she thinks All right so let's do that bum, bum, bum. aka the sauce you are absolutely right Galen you are absolutely right um, there we go right so now we are uh, 40 minutes in just two drawings two of these like so now you see how i'm building the hierarchy with my extremes extreme now this is going to be more like keys between these two right extremes here right bum, bum. right so now we're going to have this expression so she's going to she's gonna kind of turn her head okay this program has to be stupid right. Edit, paste like this so she's gonna turn her head this way and the expression is going to change right so anticipation combined with primary and secondary action. The primary action is the head turn. The secondary action is the manner in which she turns her head, right? Are you with me? Are you understanding this stuff, right? Have you ever seen anybody online give you a demonstration this fast and this efficiently and this effectively? If you do not like what you are deeming to be my arrogance, that doesn't change the truth, okay? I'm, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm doing this to help you understand that if you love animation right now and you're not happy about your work, you are in a state of crisis, okay? And that crisis can end if you shift your focus and you start to understand that there are things that you really need to learn and they are within your graph. So, you know, if you don't want to thank me, that's okay. But just understand that I'm showing you these things, right? And that's going to help you. Right. So you're either going to leave this stream thinking that was fun. Now I'll go and do something else. Or you're going to leave this stream and think, well, I don't like that guy's attitude. I'm going to carry on with my loser attitude, which hasn't really done anything for my life in terms of my drawing and animation for a long time. But never mind. It makes me feel good. Right. So you're going to either leave the stream and do that, or you're going to leave the stream and say, that's it. I've had enough. I've um, been wasting my time and my energy on doing and do learning the wrong things. And it's time for me to make that change. So you can either investigate yourself with the resources that you may already have, like the animator survival kit, the illusion of life. I wouldn't recommend anybody else's course out there. Just because I have all those punters who have bought those courses signing up to mine. But you're welcome to re-examine those if you want. Or you can click the link in my description and really take positive action and consider the real animator training library. Right, so now we have got the anticipation of the head turn, which is here like this. Now I have to be careful with this. I have to think a little bit about what she might be doing with her shoulders. So let's have her shoulder go up. All right. 
like that as she's about to turn her head once again we're drawing on the wrong layer because this program the pro people who programmed this software thought it was a good idea to be able let's select the layer in the thumbnail and you can even lock the fucking layer in the thumbnail what a great idea not doom boom i don't understand why they're the world's leading software because quite frankly that is an imbecilic thing to add right anyway we have that now i'm going to think about this hat right so the hat is going to come up now we have to think for all the people hating my comments all right or getting annoyed by my comments it's my pleasure to show you something else again that nobody else has ever dared showed you either because they're afraid you'll learn their skills and they won't have anything above you or they just don't know so watch okay now look this we're going to use secret science of shape simplification to turn this so we're going to think about there's going to be a little bit of drag but we're going to think about this being a horizontal flat piece of paper right so we're going to think about this flat piece of paper coming around here now remember how i said how these ends join to the other ends so we're going to think about that flat piece of paper maybe dragging a little bit like this we're going to think about this one maybe dragging a little bit this way like this and this opening out on itself like this right so a little bit of drag out on it like that now I'm gonna kind of tone it tone it down a little bit to make it feel a bit more like it's the actual thing right like that like this right so there we go All right let's have a little bit of the curl up there like that All right I would need a little bit more information on the model to refine this hat and understand what it really is but that's enough for me right so at the moment I'm just focusing on the head I've decided to not bother too much about the plumage of feathers on her shoulder um, I'll just put something like that which is just as long as I know where her shoulders are and I will have these very loosely like that. Boom. Right, so now we have something like this. Boom, boom, boom. So we just have one more drawing left to do. And I like to call them the 12 principles rather than laws. I respect uh, my own principles more than I respect the law. Well, here's the problem. Do you respect your own principle to jump off a cliff? and uh not appreciate the law of gravity right so that's the thing you got to work with the law and the reason why things get done is like why people can make ipads iphones and why i have an in you have an internet that you can watch me sharing this information is people are using the universal laws people are using universal laws don't think of laws as something that the government right those are man-made laws when it comes to animation, these aren't man-made laws. These are laws. You can call them principles, fine, but then you, your subconscious will not. Your subconscious will not have the same. Um, uh, attention to them because at the end of the day, fear, fear of breaking this these laws. Fear is actually a good thing, not always a bad thing, right? You don't jump off a cliff because you're afraid you'll know what will happen, right? Or the thing that makes you jump off the cliff is making you even more afraid, right? So you call it what you like, but just understand that there's, if, if things aren't happening for you, there's a reason. And it's not just about techniques. It's also about your subconscious conditioning, your programming, right? Which is your paradigm, which is often what causes people to uh, struggle and um, uh, because you know I've taken these 12 principles from the illusion of life because by the way the illusion of life doesn't really give you any order in how to learn these principles right because they were a bunch of animators who kind of knew what they were doing when they um, when they made these things um, 
problem is uh, if you start with their first principle squash and stretch you're screwed right because quite frankly um, squash and stretch is not one of the the three ba foundation principles like if you have no timing if you have no arcing if you have no slowing in and slowing out there is no squash and stretch it's just senseless so these principles need to be put into a structured order for the beginner to learn and understand um, how how it's all uh, working um, how you know what goes where solid drawing well solid drawing comes after pose to pose and straight ahead you know you're, you're not really going to have that solidity in your work unless you understand that particular um, hierarchy of drawing, right? So these laws are extremely, I've taken it and said, well, okay, yeah, there are 12 principles. Thank you, Ollie Johnson. Thank you, Frank Thomas. You're the true masters. I, I bow my head to you. I would be nothing without your knowledge. I have to be very clear uh, about that but at the same time we need to help people because people are not grasping this people who are not animators are not grasping this and even people who are animators um, they're not really grasping it properly so I am going to take what you guys have said and I'm going to make it repackage it in a way that's going to really help um, young or whatever don't have to be young new animators who are looking to try and understand how this works in a systematic fail-proof way of attaining acquiring achieving this information and getting successful results time after time after time because um you know, a lot of people say, well, let's play with a flower sack. That's the first thing we're going to play with. Eh, sorry, wrong, fucked up, waste of time. If you can't move something, then what's the point in trying to put life into it, right? You're wasting time playing just, you know, if, if you know, you want to get to the goal as fast as possible. You want to get there as efficiently as possible with with as, as few mistakes made right well so you better understand movement before you understand life right so we take these principles and we make them law we say well no 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 let's bring order to this chaos let's say let's take first principle timing that's a law of movement everything moves within a certain space of time now how does it move how fast does it move we've got uh, squash um, not squash and stretch we've got slowing in and slowing out but then along what way does it move we've got an arc okay so we need to learn these things before we start even playing with a flower sack right so what's the best thing to do a bouncing ball that's the best thing all right now we have um another head turn again if you want to if you want to seriously you know i'm talking sense if you want to seriously get this uh it's all in the real animator training library now look at this nice figure of eight thing that we're gonna do with the little turn here so we're gonna again take that principle we're gonna drag use the follow through overlap and drag with the little bit of that hat coming back round on itself like this right so we're gonna have this coming like this right and that I'm just gonna leave like that for the time being right so even there I haven't really done much but the kind of follow-through is kind of working here now these feathers on on here I can just drag them a little bit down like this then this one will be like more bum 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 like this 
on this side. Again, I'm being very, very um, kind of like careless with the body because I'm more interested in getting the head, the head turn on this path, right? Let's make that a little bit. Let's make that even bigger, right? If I was animating that, I would make that even bigger. I would then shoot these out more like that, right? And then they would settle down, right? Like that as that settles down. In fact, I can see that head working. So why don't I just go ahead and bum, bum, bum. Just go ahead and so this one, we would then bring around like this. Right, right, bum, 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 right, and then this would drop this way, right? Okay, so in under an hour, we've basically done the main elements of this scene. Let's bring that a little bit this way, right? Keep it a little bit rough like that. Right, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that all works. Bum, 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 bum. Right. Let's just uh, strengthen this, um, the eyes, because the eyes are good. Going to open her eyes. Keep them open here, not blinking them. Right. Because we're going to throw in some interesting breakdowns. To really bring this stuff into life now you're going to learn about the power of the breakdown right you've learned about animation law you've learned about extremes and you've learned about keys and you've learned about pose to pose and straight ahead you've learned about i'm not talked about the main slowing and slowing out and arcing just yet because i'm saving them because you're going to learn about breakdowns right You've learned about solid drawing, you've learned about anticipation, you've learned about primary and secondary action. Yeah. Because of the power of the breakdown, because I have a breakdown once a week. Give the man a drink. Right, <laughs> there we go, right? So even at this stage, we've got something quite nice here, right? We've got something quite nice. Well, let's go and make it even nicer with our breakdowns. So, um, first things first, is you're gonna learn about arcing now, all right? So, let me just undo that. Let's first look at the arc of motion. She comes up, right? She then continues up this way, right? And then she goes this way, bum, 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 like this, right? Then she goes up, right? So she goes up, round, and down, up, round, and down, right? So our basic arc is this, bum, bum, bum. You could go bum, 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 but I prefer to go bum, bum, bum. It's important to think of it like that, right? Okay, so but let, but let's change that a little bit. Rather than up, round, and down, how about down, up, okay? So here's the power of the breakdown. Zoom, 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 zoom. We're going to go down. Now I'm going to be quick with my breakdowns because I don't really have as much time. As I said, you want more material like this, go to ambanimation.com. In fact, I will show you after I finish this piece, um, before we go looking at people's work in the group, go to ambanimation.com and consider the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. There's something for everyone in the Real Animator Training Library. We've got hardcore training archives. We've got demo streams like this in the edutainment section. So... Um, I'm not going to spend too long on these drawings. So she's going to blink here, right? 
bump, bump. We're going to just do something like that. And bring her lips in here. I'm going to give her mouth shape like this, right? Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to lower the, keep the head in that neck here, maybe raise her shoulders, raise these things up a little bit, not too much, right? Raise this up, because as her head's going up, right? As her head's going up, as her head's going down, sorry, her body's going up, okay? Which is going to be a little opposing action, right? So now as that head is going down a little bit, right? We're going to bring this thing down, but I'm going to put a nice little bit of counter action on it like this, bum bum, right? So there's a little bounce on that. Can you see how much more interesting that breakdown is now? Dun, dun, dun. So now you can see that little breakdown makes the head turn even more interesting, right? So, but now we've got this, right? What about the breakdown between this and this, right? Well, it's a fairly straightforward one. We don't want to play with the art too much, right? So we're just going to slow things down here using the law of slowing in and slowing out, right? So we're going to play with the front view of the character, right? Which is going to be something like this. That more to that side. And that nose, I will look at this nose, actually. Right. Coming here like this. And then here there's going to be a blink as well All right so here we're going to keep the character blinking All right and again i'm being quite rough with this because we're breaking it down just getting the action involved in there All right here there's a little again the volume of the character's head will have to be taken into account on this like this you bring the neck around here then these shapes will just kind of relax into those shapes i'm going to spend too much time on that and this thing will start to turn giving dimension to the head Right, bum bum bum, so like that, perfect. Right, so let's have a look. No, this isn't from my Tailspin project, this is a completely different character. But thank you for asking. Right, so now we can see even more the secondary action that little glance there, like that. Right, so. Now we can also see the slowing in of this thing will help the, the sudden follow through of the hat as the head then turns, right? So now we're going to break down between here and here, right? Right. So then the breakdown between here and here. As she looks here, the, you, uh, timing's a different thing because... This isn't going to be one fluid movement, right? We need to register. It's going to feel like my character's blinking a lot in the breakdowns. But we need to understand that she's going to look here like this. She's going to look here. Then she's going to look here. And then she's going to turn her head, right? So we need to understand the law of timing, right? You don't just like a little kid. Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, isn't it fluid? Isn't it moving? Ah, ha, ha. No, 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 no. That's another bad thing that young people on YouTube like to just watch things flowing and moving and go fluid man fluid they don't understand timing part of the reason is is they play with the software 
and they don't really understand about X sheets and numbering and amounts of seconds and letting things breathe a little bit, right? So now we're going to change that arc, right? So we're going to come here like this, right? I'm going to make it just a quick front view. I'm going to lower, I'm going to really change her expression up in this, right? Because her eyes get big here, right? So we're going to squash and stretch her up. So this mouth is going to be in here like this. I'm going to play with that. The side comes this way. Um, bum, bum. That's good enough for now. That's all we need, right? So now let's um, let's get the neck sorted out, right? So the neck will just be this thing in the clavicle here, like this. Get the shoulders. Again, we can bring these things up. Um, um, yeah. So then, if those things come up. Oh man, drawing on the background layer once again. Right, so now if those things come up, then they'll come out a bit more here. It really doesn't matter because it's so rough, but I'm just thinking you may as well watch how I do this stuff, right? Um, then this stuff is going to come down. Now we're going to think more about this thing following the figure of eight. So this thing is now going to leave this trail. So pendulum swing. Okay. What do we learn? In, um, what do we learn in animation? Yeah, you, that's your next goal, Travis Deans to animate. Your next goal is, you know... Um, you know and understand, all right. You've been a, you've worked your way through the real animator training library. You know and understand what real animation is. So, don't care about the people's compliments. Compliments are all good. They're good for motivation, but you need to think less about getting things on ones and making them fluid. You need to up your arcs, right? So you need to think about. Um, I saw something you did on the Twitter with some woman swaying her hips. Not bad, all right? But uh, the thing is, um, you said, oh, you need to work on your drawing and your anatomy, but the arc of the hips was a little boring. I mean, it looked good, it looked fine, and everybody was enjoying the drawing. But if you're gonna animate a woman dancing and you want that sensual effect, then you want the hip, it's all, you know, I hate that song, but they say the hips don't lie, right? So you wanna think about stuff like that with an interesting arc. On the hips right um, so here we have let me just see that so now we've got a more you see her eyes are blinking a lot but that's to do with the timing she's not gonna turn with one fluid move you need to understand that we need to allow it to breathe she's gonna look here she's gonna look here then she's gonna turn right so then we've got this, 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 right? Now, what? how am I going to settle this animation, right? I'm not going to break down between here and here, right? I could do, but I'm not, right? I'm going to break down between here and here. Because we need to do our little bouncy, bouncy, right? Right? So I'm going to pretend that we're doing a dialogue scene here, right? So I'm going to go low beyond this point, right? We're going to go down, right? We're going to get that nose hair. We're going to get the mouth here like this in some kind of ooh expression, right? 
I don't think it's better if I just flip between there and there. Right. Then the head, this is going to be more like this. The eyes, we're going to keep the eyes in this kind of squash and stretch thing here. Again, I'm just throwing this in here as a breakdown. I'm not going to spend too much time drawing it in. I've drawn in the nice keys and extremes. We're going to bring that rest of the body is going to just be thrown in there. Now to think about the swish of this thing, right? This thing is going to swish beyond they're like this right to allow it to settle right so here i've kind of rushed this face but it's enough for me right it's enough to give it for me to emphasize to you the bounce right at the end which makes a world of difference right so you see how everything has weight to it like that just like that boom right so now before i go away that this would be the animation high grade feature animation of a scene from a multi-million dollar movie knocked out in an hour and you know the 11 minutes we may have spent talking at the beginning now i would need to prepare this for an assistant so i would have to tie it down because it's very rough all right but it's rough enough, you know, but hopefully it's it's good enough for you to see some nice drawing being done as well. It's good rough. But now, before, let me give you a little bit of extra value for your hanging around my stream, watching me knock out this amazing content effortlessly. Um, I'm going to use a favor um, on this stuff here so that we understand that we're going to hang around this pose right so i'm going to i'm going to put a one third of the way right hair like this now really if i was tying this down if i was timing this i would maybe i would bring her up on thirds it might have it's cartoon timing right but i would i would generally prefer to just have her rise up on a half because disney feature is a little bit more it's a little less poppy even with this cartoony stuff um but maybe the third might work so i'm gonna you're gonna understand those of you who are still even real animated training people still don't you know it takes time you learn this stuff and you know what it is but it takes time to really get to the level to start implementing so even people who've been through the real animator training library they still are in that kind of incubation phase where they're still kind of like well i don't really know when to use my thirds so much and don't worry about that that just that just comes with experience and time as the more you do but so what this why i'm coming up on thirds here is as i really want to register that we're going to be hanging around here at this point now i may have a 10 frame slow in just between these two frames here like that right a 10 frame slow in that's just on shy of half a second all right but with all the other animation that's gone before you would have already seen that we would have spent just a second to make her rise up in this pose right which is around 24 frames so again you see me talking frames but i'm not talking frames because of frame rate and all this software piece of dirt dirt shit toilet crap flush the tank toilet software shit which is making people so bad at animation right you need to understand you're the brain you've got a brain the software playing about in the timeline like this 
good? Does it does it feel right? Oh, maybe I'll make it last a bit. No, no, no. You gotta think. Right? 24 frames a second. How many frames are you using? Therefore, how long is it gonna take you to get into certain poses? What is that screen time? Alright? So you gotta think about these things. So you think six frames is a quarter of a second. 12 frames is half a second, 24 frames is one second, 48 frames is two seconds, 38, 36 frames is one and a half seconds, 72 is three seconds, blah, 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 right? So as long as you're aware of this, when you're timing your animation, you're like, well, how, how long would it really take her to be able to do that? Right? Or how long have I got to make that pose register? So you see, now just by putting that there, we feel that little look before we, all the blink, right? Then the little blink of that turn there like that. It kind of looks nice like that. My initial plan was to have her stay in this pose. But it kind of looks nice like that with a double blink, right? So you see how that little additional drawing made the world of difference to that head turn all right now 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 let's just do what i originally intended now this might kill the movement now because i'm kind of liking it like that but let's let's stick with what i originally had in my head right so another we're gonna play around with another we're gonna delay this one we'll do the same thing right we're gonna kind of like put one here on a third right here like this bum, bum, bum. again I can't stress you enough if you're getting value from the stream and if you're fed up of your animation never really hitting the mark just remember, it's got nothing to do with you. It's all about who you're learning from and the habits they've given you, right? I can undo those habits. I can make your life as an animator a whole lot better, right? Um, by transforming you into what I call a real animator. Just simply click on the link in the description and that will take you to the real animator training library. The world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. Right, so here we're going to just go into this pose a little bit slower, like this. Um, let us now have this. I'm not going to bother too much with that. All right, so I've slowed that down somewhat. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really do too much to it, but actually I kind of like the way we linger on those two looks now. So that gives us a real power with that final head turn, right? And we really slow this down to give that nice whip effect on the bottom. Can you see what timing does, right? What timing does to your animation, right? These things are crucial if you want to be good, right? It isn't about how well you draw, all right? You can draw like fucking Leonardo da Vinci or Michael. You can sculpt like Michelangelo. You're not going to move it properly. Get that in your head, okay? It's all about the laws of animation, the secret science of shape simplification, which will make you, my friend, be able to spend just one hour and suddenly create animation that is better than 99% of the population. All right. So that's really how simple it is. Hopefully I have been able to inspire you to do the right thing, to think about what you, where your energy is going when it comes to your own personal animation goals and ambitions. And, you know, just what can be done if you understand the 12 laws of animation and the secret science of shape simplification. Okay, now, 
I am now going, going to, to go, go before, before I go into the second half of the stream. Let me save that. It was my pleasure to give you an absolutely outstanding demonstration of animation at its highest level. We'll be doing that again next time. Okay, so now um, the next half of the stream, I'm going to be looking at your work that you, my community members, my amazing community that uh, has joined the Facebook uh, Growth Development and Progress Group have been posting their work. Yes, we have uh, Real Animator Training Library members in there. We will prioritize their work, but I'm going to be looking at a non-Real Animator Training Library member's work. You see this beautiful person in the chat, Mute Midori Animations. She's been following me for years, always saying hello on my live streams, always making herself known. Everybody is welcome to join my group. Um, I'm going to be looking at her post and sharing my thoughts on that as well. So just to remind you, we're going to go and look in the group in a minute, and I'll tell you about joining it there. This, this Facebook group is not exclusively for Real Animator Training Library people. The Real Animator Training Library is a self-learning course where you follow videos created by me step by step. It, I cannot guarantee feedback because it is at the most affordable price. You're getting, uh, you know, we get people who have been to CalArts who've paid 180k for their degrees joining. We get people who've paid Don Bluth 10, 10k joining our um, real animator training uh, class. Um, no, joining our group, real animator training library. And uh, they're joining it for the price of a Charles... Christmas present, you know, a mid-range laptop, a drone, or a uh, an iPad. So I can't uh, guarantee feedback, but I care about my community, and out of my own goodwill, I try every week to look at people's posts in the group and offer my thoughts on them, because ultimately, you guys are the future of real animation, hand-drawn animation. So uh, it's certainly a very much in my interest to keep an eye on the garden that's growing in that group. Okay, right, so before we go and have a look uh, at that group, I'm going to go and have one final look in here to see if anybody's asked me any specific question regarding the head turn or anything like that. And, um, and then we will go into the second half of the stream. So only about five minutes of the chat here now. I'm going to be quite quick. Um... Renata, how are you? Um, what are my favorite animated movies? My favorite animated movies are generally uh, the anything from the Golden Age up to the 1960s uh, era of Walt Disney uh, hand-drawn animation. I like some of the Renaissance films like Beauty and the Beast, um, Aladdin, uh, Little Mermaid. Those three are amazing. I like Secret of Nim by Don Bluth. I like uh, Prince of Egypt. I like Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. I like, um, uh, I love uh, these uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky, Akira, Ghost in the Shell, um, Tales from Earthsea, um, Ariete, um, uh, Grave of the Fireflies, Metropolis. Um, there are lots of uh, various animated f movies that I like. Um, great work out there. Um, what are the yellow lines? The yellow lines are simply when I draw and animate, I like to use, when I draw in a sketch pad, I dab things back with a putty eraser. All right. So all of these drawings that you see me do in here, like these super clean looking drawings that you guys see me do. Let me find one that I actually like. I've got tons of them. Okay. Um, all of these drawings that you see me do in my um, AMB Lady Sketchpad. Okay. Let's just show you some of these, right? They look really, really clean, right? But they've all been drawn once and once once only i get my pencil and i draw them and then i get a putty eraser and then i rub them back with a putty eraser and then i draw a fine line on top well when i work in software i hate working with layers because layers breaks my flow 
and my continuity. That's why sometimes I involuntarily have Tourette's syndrome and curse. I don't really have Tourette's, but I curse because suddenly I've clicked on the wrong layer in the thumbnail view, which is a stupid thing in this software, and it, I'm drawing on the wrong layer, and that completely kills my flow. So I like to change the color of my rough into a yellow and draw on top of that on the same layer. So there's nothing special about the yellow in this uh, Supernatural Academy Girl Edition. Wow, what a name. Um, chicken scratching. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yes, Eartha Kit. Eartha Kit is the best thing about Yzma. What a uh, what a sexy voice it has to be. Said. <laughs> um, Studio Anima, how are you? Have you changed your avatar? Yes, this will stay up on YouTube. Don't worry, this is a review stream. Um, Cameron Allen Davidson Black. I love the fact library members are always talking about the work they're doing in the library. We're going to be looking at that in a minute. Um, just seeing if there's any more questions. Mm -mm. Midori is working on her characters. Quirk of art. Hello, is this from your... Okay, I remember that. Silver Sun, how are you? Push the orcs, thank you. Yes. You know what, Travis? When you got time, maybe... Um, Maybe you don't actually have access to it. I don't think you bought that one uh, because it's it came later when the library stopped just refueling. Uh, if you have access to that how to animate your own film uh, thing in my library, uh, it's worth watching some of those where we talk about the Santa put, pushing the arts on the, and the breakdowns on some of those to kind of... Uh, get to that level um, bum, bum, bum. thank you thank you all um, I've known AMB for years I've never seen another creator that is as dedicated to helping other creators succeed as he is thank you so much Galen he won't do the work for you, nor should any good teacher, but he'll tell you exactly what you need. Exactly. That's that's it. Um, are layout drawings the same as storyboard? No. Layout drawings are not the same as storyboard drawings. Layout drawings are layout drawings. Um, CG, call it pre-visualization, pre-vis. You basically need an environment. You need to know where the character is. Um, uh, is he where is he in at what stage of the timing is he going to hit those poses but they, they the animator especially on a feature should never stick to the layout guys poses that's why tv animation is so so poor because when we do layouts we used to do them in the uk in my case some people would do them in the states they'd get sent to another country an eastern country or whatever and we would write in the dope sheet when to hit these layout poses which they had to stick to so it was very rigid and you know very just a to b nuts and bolts stuff um, i'm not confident to use one layer that's all right you'll get to that level soon silver sun uh, just keep on working everything all in good time Okay, right, that is that. Let us now go over to the um, real animator growth development and progress group uh, to look at your work in there. So um, let me just save this. Let me just change. Okay, now we have got people joining this group on Facebook and we can see the glorious Bridget Hernandez uh, Mutant Midori Animations 
We're going to be starting on her post today, but first I will talk to you a little bit about this group. This group is free for anybody to join. Okay, it is my gift to you. You have your own community of dedicated animators, real animators. You can join a group where the library members are posting their efforts and you don't have to be a library member. You can be part of this community and already you're making a, a step in the right direction to get get the right peer group, to get the right, you know, motivational, positive stuff coming in your social media feeds, looking at people working hard at the things that you want to um excel at it's called real animator growth development and progress on facebook and it is free you can join this you do not have to be a library member you can see i have got uh 3.3 thousand members in this group so um uh if i had that many members in my library i'd be a, a significantly multi multi millionaire so 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 the thing is uh you, you don't have to be a library member in this group. So feel free to join. Um, okay. Uh, now, if you join this group, you have a... Um, if you go to the featured section, you have a free gift here. It's called Real Animator Training Preliminaries. Um, if you click on the description, you'll see at the bottom there is a... At the top, there's a link to the library. But you'll see at the bottom there's a link with a passcode here. Just copy this access password and click on the link and paste it in here. And what this will take you to is my free gift. Again, apart from the peer group, you get this free gift. You get nine free lectures from the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. Nine free real animator training library lectures for you to play around with and try you don't even need to give me your email address, so you don't need to worry about me trying to sell you anything. This is absolutely 100% free for you. You get the Master, the Bouncing big Master, the Basic Bouncing Ball. You get uh, Master, the Basic Swinging Pendulum. You get the first in the uh, Walk Cycle Lectures, which is just about the legs. You get the Bones of the Foot from the Anatomy. You get Bones of the Hand from the Anatomy. You get the first uh, squash and stretch exercise with the flower sack. You get an acting class from uh, the seminars. You get dynamic perspective from uh, the edutainment section. And you get Ask AMB um, episode 49 uh, from the edutainment section. So that is my free gift to you, anybody joining this group. If you haven't done so already, go and join this group. I'm going to now proceed to look at some people's work. Again, Bridget is not a member of the Real Animator Training Library, but she is certainly somebody who is very serious about hand-drawn animation. And, and because of that, she has my, uh, my respect and as a result, also my time. So I'm gonna look at Bridget's work in a minute. But before I do so, I'm gonna talk to you about the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation, which is the Real Animator Training Library. Um, Go to ambanimation.com, click on Real Animator Training. Real Animator Training is what I've spent the last five years of my life doing, building this archive. You can watch these videos in here, you can read this information, you can listen to the testimonials. Some of these people are in the chat of this live stream. I've spent the past five years of my life building the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. You have just seen me effortlessly do this and give you a ton of amazing tips while I do it, right? No just answering simple questions in the chat for the hundredth time, you know, uh, about this and that or the other. I lead the conversation, all right? And I don't apologize about that. I'm leading your following. That's how this is going to work, right? So that's why it's called Real Animator Training. So if you click join now, you're given two options. You also get to see people's work. You've got Travis the Insta Animate who's in the chat. Let's, let's show off some of the people in the chat here, right? So you can click on this and see the caliber of work being done by people who have come from the Real Animator Training Library. Travis, after just three years, is now becoming a little bit of a star by producing his, um, his content. Uh, uh, this is this is his work that he's been he made his own three minute film uh, extremely uh, proud of him so you can see that it's not just me boasting and showing you my tw my hardcore work which uh, I've been in the industry for 20 years you can see that this actually does get results 
from uh, people just like you who are looking to improve their animation skills. So here is Travis. You saw me talk to him earlier about arcs in the live stream. There's other people in here who you can look at if you want. This is Aaron AOX. He made a film for the Dalai Lama. Um, you've got Life Fantasy. This is her work. She's another amazing person who's been involved in real animator training. So it very much is transforming people's lives. It's transforming all of the people's lives in the group, as you're going to see. And there's no reason why it won't transform your your uh, life either. It works. There ain't, you know, that's a hundred percent proof positive that it works. So what is it? You got training archives. You got edutainment archives. Now, when you watch me doing this, this is what I call edutainment. Some people would have the audacity to put this in and call it a course, all right? Well, that's most people on YouTube, even pe even seasoned people. I don't do that, okay? I, I, I don't pull the wool over your eyes. This place is called real for a reason. I'm not showing you the right way. I'm not showing you the wrong way. I'm showing you the real way on how you're going to get good. So edutainment, we'll talk about that later. But this is the real thing. The step-by-step -step structured course is the training archives. You can either purchase each one of these archives one at a time or you can get them in a bundle and save yourself a ton of money. There are two bundles available. Just click on the links and you can see what combinations you get. So we talked about animation law. When we talked about this, I talked about the six laws of movement. All right. And then the six laws of life, the six laws of movement, timing, which, you know, timing made this head turn, right? Arcing, slowing in and slowing out. We talked about slowing into this pose slowing out of certain poses you know follow through overlap and drag pro, uh, pose to pose and straight ahead and of course solid drawing however rough this is it feels solid right so those basic six laws you're going to learn through step-by-step -step exercises in this library you just watch these videos here they tell you about the content of the archive you're going to learn about those six laws of movement. Then again, I talked about how to make this thing a lot more full of life. We talked about anticipation. We talked about primary and secondary action. We talked about squash and stretch. We talked about exaggeration. We, we talk, you know, the drawings are full of appeal. OK, and then finally, this thing, which we one thing I didn't talk too much about, but which is all at the bottom of all this is staging. OK, this character has been designed, pre-designed. It's got a personality. It's got a context. And that's why it was able. I was able to immediately dive into the personality of the character and animate it. So that's staging as well. So those are what we call the six laws of life. And that's what you learn in the intermediate archive. So the full 12 laws or 12 principles, or some people might like to call them, you learn in the basics and intermediate archive using flower sack. Um, in the advanced archive, you consolidate those two and you learn about the secret science of shape simplification. You see how I, I drew all this thing and I manipulated shapes and I was able to get a model on these basic shapes. So you learn about that in the advanced archive and then you learn about uh, consolidating those 12 laws and putting them into practice to really start getting your animation going. Because after intermediate, you're still not going to be to level. And arguably, even after advanced, it's going to take a bit of time for it to sink in, right? So the, you also have an anatomy archive where you learn every single bone of the human body because ultimately it's the bones that you're understanding. Uh, why do we get good arcs? Because we understand the bone structure, not the musculature structure. Musculars are, muscles are important, but um, bones are what the animator needs to know first and foremost. Uh, the animation lectures is kind of, they, all of these are follow step by step. you got to follow along as I do them with the exception of animation lectures, which are kind of like similar to what we did here, but a little less, in, a little less informal. I'm a little bit more formal, less cursing, less talking to the chat. Uh, very much like when you'd go to see Glenn Keane or Eric Goldberg uh, giving a seminar if you were at CalArts. Here you got tons of seminars by me. And if you're honest, this has been a ton of valuable information for you. So it doesn't really matter uh, who you're getting it from. It's what you're absorbing. Um, and arguably, I think I demonstrate better. Right. So um, at the after those things, you have those uh, 
archives, you can then think about the edutainment section. The edutainment section is where it's going to be more content like this. So it's priced a lot lower because it's, it's not really a course. Uh, it's more demonstration. Um, you're going to have animation sessions where you watch me animate drawing sessions, ask the animator animation breakdowns. Uh, how to animate your own film. You basically, this is, this is not really a course, but you basically watch me animate a two minute film from start to finish to this level. Even watch me design the characters. You can watch the whole two minute film in this video here um, uh, if you want, but the whole thing, you know, is 56 live streams. Some of these live streams are about four hours, but as I said, it's in educa edutainment. There's a lot of fun with the chat, a lot of banter. We even get the chat doing fitness exercises, you know, questions about, um, you know, not, not burning out at your desk and all that stuff. So there's a lot of fun with the chat as we're doing these streams. So there's 56 live streams in here and you can watch a film, two minute film being made from start to finish. But that's still considered edutainment because of the kind of content that is in there. Okay, so that is uh, the Real Animator Training Library, the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation bar none. Again, if you have a problem with the price, you, you really, you're, you're kidding yourself that you want to be an animator because you're getting the world's best training stuff. We've got people from Disney who've joined this archive. We've got people who've worked at Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. We have got people who've been to CalArts, uh, people who have paid Don Bluth 10 grand, all joining this place. You got to ask yourself why. They're joining it for the price of a child's Christmas present. Mommy, I want a drone for Christmas. Mommy, I want an iPad for Christmas with a pen. Mommy, I want a laptop for Christmas. A gaming laptop. You're getting the you're getting all of that training for around that kind of price tag if you combine the archives or even consider the bundles in here. So anybody that has a problem with the price, understand this. This place is called the real animator training library. Okay? There's even a section here with a turd in the head say who this is not for. Okay? Not saying it's not for you, but then if you have a problem with the price just remember these words. Okay, so that is the Real Animator Training Library, the world's best learning resource in the craft of hand-drawn animation. Right, now we're going to go and look at people's work in the group. Now, Bridget, or I like to call her Mute Midori because she's always called herself Mute Midori. Um, you have posted this in here, uh, but it is a GIF. So I can't slow it down. Um, it, uh, if you put a YouTube link, I could like maybe frame by frame it, but I just have a GIF. So I recommend to anybody posting in this group, if you really want good feedback from me, post a YouTube link. If you're worried about people seeing your work, just make the link unlisted. So it won't really get any views um, and it'll be hard to find and only people with the link will be able to watch it. If it's private, I cannot be able, I cannot watch it, so make it unlisted. Um, but anyway, I think Mute has said this is the crowd I have to animate running. So I don't think that she necessarily is looking for any feedback, but she's saying I've got to animate a crowd of people running um, in the back here. Now, Mute, I don't understand this last pose. I think, can I pause it at least? Yes, I don't understand this last pose. Uh, that you've got here because we zoom out and there's no sense of perspective or is it like a split screen thing where we see the crowd on the top and then playing at the bottom or is there a sense of perspective so I don't really quite understand that so you now someone mentioned to me layouts beforehand um, so layout wise um, oh or if he's playing from front view and we zoom out, then the crowd are going to be behind them. So if they were on stage, I still don't quite get it, Mute. So um, layout-wise, you might want to, like, if the crowd are all up here, is it like, is it a grid and are they all playing here like this? I'm going to make my own kind of layout here. I don't understand. You stick to your layout, Mute. 
But I'm just, and then the crowd are all going to be running towards them. So this is layout. You've got to work out everything. You've got to work out the stage. Maybe there'll be like a, uh, a stage thing here like this in the front or whatever, you know, um, tables and chairs and the stadium around. So that's one thing to think about is the layout. They're running downhill. So before you go animating that mute, even if they're running downhill, you still really need... Okay, so these are trees. Okay, these are trees. So if they're running downhill, let me think about that. Let me think. So again, again, what? without putting any vanishing points or anything, sometimes I just like to play, right? Sometimes I just like to play when I'm roughing stuff out. So I would do something like this, right? So let's imagine that the hill is something here like this and the contours are like this, right? So I'm kind of contouring my hill. And now I'm creating a path for these guys to run along. Now again, this perspective is very loose, but it's it's sometimes it's it's it may be all that you need, right? So I might look at my camera frame and play with it even more right let's we i personally and now i'm not telling you to do this mute but i'm just giving you some ideas right so um so they're they're running down this hill here like this right um and then on the hill we can start putting like trees bushes you know more things we could just just very loosely working out what we want maybe there'll be a path on the hill so the crowd don't have to you know maybe a little fence coming along here right like this now over here is where our action is going to be taking place so i don't know maybe they might be on a stage right so I'm going to go and put a little kind of like little bit of a stage here like this, right? Again, I'm being very loose with the perspective. I'm not I'm not finishing anything yet. Just like my animation, I work loose first, right? I'm not finishing trying to finish anything, not spending not wasting valuable time of the flow of my brain because when you're drawing, your brain is trying to communicate ideas. Your subconscious is trying to communicate ideas. This is how to do it, Buster. And the more your conscious mind starts trying to get into the detail, you start losing that flow. So I can sort this out later, right? So let me get a fatter brush. So let's say that we've got our guy with his guitar hair like this, right? So I'm just going to put an outline and we'll have him. He may be a little bit too big, right? Then we've got the we've got the drums, the drum kit guy here like this, right? So we've got drum guy here like this, right? He can be here. There'll be some other guy with the drums, and we'll put them in a little triangle. Let me just already now I've gone and drawn them in the same color, which is a bit of a shame, but it's all right. I'm being rough. Let me just put them down like that. So we have that. And then we've got, who's the other one? Um, another guitar like this. So we've got the other guitar standing here like this, right? So here's a bit of stage staging going on here. Now I might change that and make that more straight. See my subconscious is kind of telling me how to help that along right so now you've got your now you can start tidying up this drawing but I, I've got a lot of people's work to look at through here uh, which is going to help you so what if you're animating the crowd you want to think about the path that the crowd is running down right they're all running downhill like this right so I'm going to put a loose uh, thing here now I'm going to do my yellow which K.A. always asks me about so the crowd 
you have to design your crowd. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Let's say that there's 10 people, right? And you can always rebuild them. So you have to think about the crowd in a in a pattern, right? So maybe we'll have the crowd in a diamond, right? Then the diamond could become a triangle, right? Then the triangle could then become a backwards triangle, right? Like that, you know? Or for me, what makes more sense is so I, the reason why I'm explaining this to you is this is this is the secret stuff which nobody else will explain to you. So it's my pleasure. Let's say that we start with a triangle that there's an order. There's one man at the front, right? There's two men behind him. There's three behind that and one there and one there, right? Now... Over here, the triangle will have changed where more and more people are kind of like getting mad. So here we'll have kind of like, we'll still kind of vary it, but we'll have four of them in front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight people, all right? You can do it with as many people as you want, right? So we'll have four of them in front, right? We'll have two behind, five, six, seven and then one trailing behind like that so they're all fitting in the in the triangle right so then in the middle you're going to have that triangle being more of a diamond shape right so then maybe you'll have these two on either side you know kind of evening up out here so you need to go in individually and take each one of those so that would be how you'll be keying the group and you'll say okay well on frame, let's say that it takes them three seconds or two seconds to get hair. So maybe for the first one second, right, or one and a half seconds, right, let's just say one and a half seconds to one and a half seconds, make it easy. You've got to think about them all being in this shape, right, and then how they're going to distribute into this shape, right? So that's working out your extreme poses of the crowd, right? And then for the next one and a half seconds, you've got to think about them going from that shape into that shape. Now, when you animate them, that's animating a more sophisticated kind of crowd. Now, you could just do the easy thing, right? That's a lot of hard work because you've got to think about how the crowd are interacting with each other. You could animate one person at a time, right, running down this hill, right? So you could just animate one person running down the hill. Then you could do, do, do the same path 10 times, right? So animate this person running down the hill 10 times in 10 different ways or animate, animate five of them and then duplicate them and change the color or whatever, right? But then once you've animated them down the hill through compositing, right? Through compositing, you can then randomly put all these different people running down the hill at different, with starting at different phases of the run, um, varied out throughout there. So they all run down the hill and they all look like they're running together. The only difficulty is, is if you're dealing with too many, you have to make sure that they really don't overlap over each other when you're playing with composition, um, compositing, right? So that's that. And I'm going to quickly animate somebody running down this hill just as a kind of like uh, guide to show you how simple it is to animate somebody running down a hill. Um, so let's let's just stick to a basic torso so the hill is going to create this kind of um momentum right so there's going to be kind of like a downward momentum on there like that right so i'm then gonna duplicate this and i'm gonna take this guy 
and I'm gonna put him here right I'm gonna think about his arc right so that'll kind of like be my first kind of double steps right and I'm not gonna blow him up you can eyeball it right all right so you got this this right then I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna keep him straight now here like this I'll blow him up slightly so we got dun 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 right and then I'm gonna duplicate that I'm gonna take that here let's have him go more here now get bigger like this bum 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 right like that right let's turn him over this way bum 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 and then one more um let's have him down here like that blowed up this big right so at the moment we have something like this zoom right zoom right let's turn off the onion skin right so he's he's going like that right so we've got a path of action right now i'm gonna come in here and i'm going to create a frame in the middle of there right i'm going to put on my light box now between here and here right i'm going to find my middle point which is here right so let's just do that right now i'm going to paste oopsie let's do that now i'm going to get my man here oh I, I don't need to paste it i'm being too lazy right so i'm going to get my man here now i'm going to change his pose right so his other leg is going to be in front right and his other arm is going to be in front now i'm not really caring too much about the posing i'm more showing you the the, the mechanics of making this thing work right making each step work right so here we've got this right bum 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 maybe you should be a little bit bigger and not too much right? Bum. right so now i've got between here and here so we're going to do the same thing we're going to just delete that we're going to create my little halfway point right like that now i'm going to come here you see how many times w when i was in the industry i would wish there would be somebody showing me how to do things like this um, i just had to do trial and error right so it's my absolute pleasure to be disclosing this information to you right so we then have something like this so you can already see how this is building up right um, bum, bum, bum. you can already see the run is starting to to take place um, right so already it's starting to look more like a run just by changing those legs right now we're gonna go from here to here we've got that here to here right so it's the same deal so let's take that and half it oh man um so again and you can you know depending on how much how good you want this to be you can really think about the running poses but often with a crowd scene even when you're trying to really put lots of stuff into it it's only really the people at the front um that that are gonna be seen so don't you know don't put too much effort into stuff that's not necessarily going to be seen right um now we've got this 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 
Now one more final one between here and here. So we're going to put that there like that. I'm going to turn that on. And we're going to delete that. Bump, 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 bump. Oops, see, I just made that up. And I kind of guessed the right way, you know. Um, all right. So then this is going to be here like this. Just get him a little bit bigger. Right. So very quickly we have blocked out our extremes of each step right as he's going here like this and now that run is starting to come even more together now i'm not going to do all of it because i've got a lot i've got a lot uh to get through right we've hit the two hour mark but i am going to show you um yeah just like the bike you got it um i am going to show you how this kind of works right so now we're going to think about passing positions, right? Between here and here. Uh, down pass. Uh, so this, this actually here is the contact. So the next thing will be the down pass. So without the up, it's going to look weird. But we're just going to go in, in ahead and do this. So let me quickly just kind of put in the down pass, right? Right, so we've got the down pass here like that. Right, and then this will kind of swing through like this. Bum, bum. Now without the the up hopping position, I wonder if I can just quickly throw in the up hopping position. It's so rough that maybe Let's see how fast I can knock this out. Right, so then we're going to add the up hopping position in here. Like this. Then this arm is going to be coming back. This arm is going to be coming forward. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's very rough, but it'll do. And this actually needs to change position will rotate that there I'm being super super rough so you see how we're gonna map this out right so now we're gonna do the next down pass position right so yeah I mean I'm being very very scribbly here very very loose but it'll do right so we've got this guy in a down pass position so again, these all this thing that you hear me talking about down pass position and all that. This is all from the real animator training, right? Um, now let's have him in the hopping up position. So again, these are the basic positions. It's not necessarily in between or anything, but we have to have this bouncing ball effect on our character. So then again here, this will come out like this. Bum. Right. Then this arm will be swinging through like that. Bum, bum, bum. Let's have a quick look. Bum. Yeah, there we go. So we're starting to get the run very roughly going on in there. Now, I, I'll continue, because it's so quick, I'll continue it. But I think we kind of get the point. But it'll be nice to see because it's so quick um, and I'm being so rough, right? So now we have the one between here and here. So here we're getting more into the conventional angle so we can really see um, the down pass position taking place here. So we're going to have him down in a pass position, right? We're going to have his hand here like that, his head. Let's straighten that hand up a little bit. Bum, bum. My arcs are not 
because I'm just merely illustrating this, right? My arcs, all of this is just so rough. It needs to be improved and everything, but this is just to give you some idea of the approach that you're taking, right? So then we'll have the push-off position here, which we haven't really focused on the push-off position as we've been doing this thing. We've just been going into the up, right? Which will come here like that. Then this hand will come more like this. Bum, bum, bum. Right? That, yeah, that gives them more power into the torque and turn. See, even when you know anatomy, stuff like this is becomes even easier. Um, so I'm just breaking this down twice, uh, as I'm with two breakdowns, two one key and one breakdown in there as I'm doing this. So let's keep him in the down position here. Let's swing that arm even further. Let's go a little bit more beyond here like this. Bum, bum, bum. Let's change it up a bit, right? And let's go with another one, the another high up push off into the up. Need to think about the dynamic aspects. That would turn there like that. So there'd be a lot more going on with the hand there, actually. But we'll just keep it like that. Bum, 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 bum. Let's have a look at that. No, you shouldn't give up, Midori. And hopefully I'm helping you see how how straightforward this all is. So yeah, he's, it's, it's very basic, but you can see that how we're building it, right? So he's coming down the hill and I've just got a few more to do. So what is it? Two hours, six minutes. So we'll just go ahead and just finish it up. May as well. To be honest, there's not much else to look at in the group other than the usual. Um, the training library members are doing so well that there's not I've had a little glance. There's not too much for me to tell them, really, other than keep up the good work. But I will look at their work and see if there's any real... Um, as I said, the training library is very thorough. When you follow the exercises, um, the work speaks for itself. But we're going to look anyway and see if there's anything I can help them with. Right, so this comes in here like this. Then let's straighten that arm out just a little bit. I'm being super quick now. I can't be asked. Right, so then now we're going to have the leg kick off in the air like this. This leg out here like this. This back here. This arm here like this. Bum, bum, bum. So again, I hope the other thing I'm showing you is, is again, just like with the head turn, when you watch me start this head turn, right? When you watch me start this head turn, I started, ex it still is rough, but it's drawn into an appealing level now. But you watched me start it very, very loose, almost like the way I'm doing this. Don't get so caught up with the drawing, right? Now, it, it does affect, having confidence in your drawing is very, it is an affecting factor, right? So if you're scribbling and you go, well, it works in scribble, but it doesn't work, and I'm not sure, and I don't know, and, but worry about, cross those bridges when you come to it, right? Don't um, think too much about stopping from getting a nice flowing animation. Uh, into suddenly going into drawing detail mode because drawing detail mode is not really the getting the actual laws of animation down so much you you will do when you think about things appeal exaggeration primary and secondary but getting those fundamental laws uh, down that 
this all this stuff basically happens when we're when we're in the blocking stage right now I'm just I'm, I'm just putting in whatever here because I don't I'm just doing this to take it to the end I don't need to right I've, I've, I've made my point right but I just I'm putting in more poses here just to so you get the feel right so then once you've systematically approached your supposedly challenging thing like this you're already building brain cells in your mind how you're going to overcome any problems that may arise when you're doing it right um just this one left now i'm not even checking it because i know that when it's this rough anything will look like it works but i think you try you you have enough faith in what i'm doing here to understand that this really does work right um because it's it's following a certain path and i've explained it to you in a very logical way um, bum, 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 bum. All right now one more up and again, this is using what we call pose to pose and straight ahead, right? Another animation law being put into practice right here, right? Bum, bum. Let's move that arm a bit more there like that. So the things to take away from this mute midery are <laughs> you need a proper layout and so i've covered layout for you and i've also covered in how to help so now something happens there maybe i just flipped it too fast i've also covered in how to tackle the the character running down a texture like so these are the basic poses of the run and it definitely we you have to draw it in better than this and and iron out all the little awkward uh quibbles in there but you can see that that character is is following a definite path and he's getting bigger and he's coming in perspective downhill so all of the hard work has been done right all of the the real hard work has been done relatively quickly when you know how just like with this uh, all of the hard work was done at the beginning and then I just drew it in, right? So now I just got to draw it in. So this is another thing that goes to people who talk about animation being easy. And as long as you know how to draw, well, that's a load of shit. Because if you don't know how all this stuff that I've been explaining to you, the animation law, and then the secret science of shape simplification, as I said, you can draw like Leonardo uh, da Vinci or Raphael or any one of those guys and you're not gonna be able to to make your animation look good because it's not gonna be following those definite laws um, so hopefully that gives you um, some advice on how to move forward with that mute midery thank you for uh, posting in the group um, this is amazing study by Selena Nina, which we talked at last time. Now I'm going to look at her work um, some more when we uh, get near the end of this uh, week's posts. Gav Cameron Black is posting his drawings that he's been doing of Briar Rose and Princess Daphne from Dragon's Lair. We'll be talking about those soon. Now, Maggie Ray, I'm not going to talk too much about this. You've said a rough animation I did. I've been working really hard on improving my my animation skills since I last posted. I hope I've improved. So, um, again, I don't think Maggie's a member of the training library. But what I would suggest to you, Maggie, is to watch my approach of doing this head turn earlier in the stream. 
and then think about it in relation to what your character is doing here. Now you're trying to hit all the right things and I like the fact that you're dealing with simple shapes. And again, you've posted a GIF, which I can't really look at. But you need to really think about the timing of your movements um, and the, the arcs that's taking place because we've got very, very bumpy arcs taking place here. So I like that you're dealing with simple shapes, but I would say don't even worry about um, if you really want to do a movement like this. Uh, don't worry about even things like the keeping volume of the breast and, and all this. You can, you can think about the face. But I would suggest you working with a simpler figure. You can use a triangle for the head if you like. You can have triangle eyes if you like. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't go anything more beyond dealing with something like this from what I can guess, look at from your stage of where you're at now, right? Because you need to, you need to think about the perspective. Now you could contour that and think about moving that shape as a as a cuboid block right so you need to think about moving these shapes and making sure that these you know you got you're dealing with too many shapes too early on um you're dealing with too many shapes too early on i know this is what people want people want to be able to animate and draw to this level which i keep showing you like early on they want to get to this level where they can just do this stuff right um you got to understand the law the principles beforehand so you're building brain cells by trying to move a character along here but i understand there's an urge there's a desire to draw a person and there's a desire to draw a character um but first you need to get understand movement before you can do, put life into it and you need to understand arcing, timing, slowing in and slowing out. So you're trying to do things in the with, with head turns. And characters walking towards the screen and all things like this. But there's no... It's just movement at the moment. And the movement is not following a clean arc or a... Or a... Or a... I guess the word is a smooth arc. So even if you've got a chaotic movement, your person might go here, go off balance, go here, squiggle around and go here. But then even here, I would say this squiggle would be better as a circle. And rather than having... So your arcs, even if you're doing chaotic arcs, they need to be kind of clear and smooth. At the moment, your animation's kind of moving like this. So your arcs aren't really well defined and your focus is on the drawing of the character, even though you're being rough. So I would suggest playing with something a little bit simpler um, if you want to do that. Cameron is working on uh, Dirk the Daring and Briar Rose. These are good drawings, Cameron. I can see you struggling a bit um, because you're using hand-eye coordination. And that's good because I could, sh I could show you. You've done better with Briar Rose here, which is funny because Dirk is a lot easier. Um, but just keep going. Now, I could show you the whole Bluth construction thing if you look on the model sheet. So at the moment, you're... You're using your hand-eye coordination to draw. And I think that's a good thing. But the whole Dirk the Daring thing is, you know, he's very much... Let me make up my own Dirk the Daring pose. I don't know. Let's have him standing like this, about to draw his sword, right? So... I pretty much know this character like the back of my hand. Um, so it's my pleasure to explain it to you. So as long as you remember these principles, right? Hip, shoulder, right? He's got this kind of like quality where he's like this shape, right? And then he's got 
shoulders and then he's got his curves and straights which go on there like that right so we've got something like this now we might have a side contour there like this but then it'll be turning and then he'll have a hip and then he'll have anatomy in his legs so he'll have the the muscle underneath and this and then he'll have these huge feet like this right the knee and his uh, huge foot like this right coming in under here then he'll have his garment his sheath the sword will be here like this then his head is just a simple shape with a nose and a chin right which comes off like this in fact I'm, I, an idea came a came to me the other day and I'm going to present it to you all um, if it means putting the ground hopper on hold I don't mind because this is all about getting real animator studios off the ground and about doing a pro doing a project that we know we can fund now I know that Bluth let a lot of you guys down when he said that he was gonna do a Dragon's Lair movie and uh, he raised five hundred thousand dollars for it and now it's suddenly a live action project right on Netflix with Ryan Reynolds right so my thing is is because I know this style and I can draw and animate it very easily is is like what not necessarily a game but like a 10 minute short of like a new character but a very Dirk the Daring style character I'm going to see if people would be up for, you know, you know, kind of like a cross between Dirk the Daring and Space Ace. I'm going to, I'm making up my own kind of like design where I'm going to see if people would be up for um, funding a project which is, will be full traditional animation and it'll be like a 20 minute uh, story of, uh, a very similar kind of Dragon's Lair kind of thing uh, in, involving characters. It'll be quite easy to animate and I'll have real animator training library members and students helping me out on it. And if people would be up to, to would, would you pay for something like that? Would you, like I tried to raise money for Little Red, but would you, would you contribute to something like that if you knew guaranteed that you would get the project at the end of it you know and it'll be very old-fashioned the princess will be just like princess daphne we won't be trying to jump into modern uh um agendas or anything we'll just make it for the fans the fans the way they want it exactly like the original thing we're not trying to get change anything to fit into any message or anything it'll be exactly the way that are fans of the original want it would you be up for that let me know in the chat as i've mentioned it and i'll just keep an eye out on my channel posts uh, because i am developing a side off idea in my mind uh, to get real animator studios off the ground and it's a very easy project which will be something you know dragon's lair is just a one guy jumping here and there with 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 little bits of peril peril going on there and there here and there um with the princess kind of screaming and then uh th then something nice happening in the end uh and that's it so we may do that um so at the end of the day i'm gonna see if that's some something we can do but hopefully that construction gives you an idea cameron but keep on doing what you're doing in spite of the construction because you need to develop your hand-eye coordination and you are getting better but I can see you struggling a little bit with these but that's a good thing that's a good thing um, again with characters like Princess Daphne 
There's a temptation, and I had it too when I was young, especially being a man, is to focus on certain aspects. But if you just break it down into what she is, she's just a simple shape like this, right? With a, with another simple shape here. And this is this is all there is to getting around that. So then then you kind of then have the the pelvis starts here, but the leg the leg joints go here like this, right? And and all this is is one shape, right? One shape with another shape in there. It's that easy, but as young guys we tend to overdo it, right? And this is this is all the character is right just simple simple shapes even her mouth is and all is just a simple kind of shape like that with a nice hair now I did kind of get her neck a little bit too long there as I've been explaining there but if you think about your drawings like this right and then just add these elements in there it becomes very very easy right to get to the bare bones of these things Right. Um, Mageburger, here's my third attempt at the quadruped trot cycle. This is part three lecture. I wanted to know how it is to draw the pelvis and the body instead of just a separate. Hopefully this one should be all right for me to move on. I think you did move on. Now this is really good work, Mageburger. But the problem that I see here is that there is a bit of a, he's, he's got a very long torso uh, and it shows in the final result that I think you posted. But everything else is working just fine. You, you know, it's, it's all good. And your, the, the plus is, is your rear and your torso are size wise. This time they're good. Uh, the, you know, I think before with the walk, the size was a little off. But I think size-wise they're good. Now there may be a little bit of a long length between the two, but uh, I don't really have anything much else to say apart from that. There's a again, this is an older post, but that always makes me smile. Um, Pedro says, "Here it is not moving so much. Instead, I tried a bit more subtle chapter. I worked on slow in, slow out too." Uh, I want to go forward, but I want you to help me rock this exercise. I've already shared my thoughts with you about this, Pedro, but we'll talk about it again. Um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. See your even your face or your mouth shapes don't work. A journey really work. of a thousand miles begins with a single step. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. All right, now it's easier for me to just put my camera on, Pedro, um, and explain to you. I'll, I'll re-explain to you in case you missed it why this doesn't work. Your character is just one drawing and he's standing there and he goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. You see how wooden that is, right? Your body is just there. He's just like this. He's just like this. You don't have your, your, your lip sync. I'll show you a few mouth shapes that might help. Um, because in the in the in the advanced archive we you, we deal with a human mouth and you're trying to do animal mouths. Maybe you should have made some sketches from Disney movies and seen how they did animal mouth shapes before doing this, and up and use the vowel shapes you learned in the archive. But that's a different thing. Here, more important than lip sync. Lip sync is is secondary for me. Like for me, that action that I just did is way more than lip sync, right? So. 
If you're going to animate subtle stuff, you've got to think about body weight movements. So if he says a journey of a thousand miles is worth more than a single, st it starts with a single step. What does he say? Hang on. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Again, you're going to have to think about the voice delivery. Maybe it is that kind of straight, like a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So how would he say that? Maybe, maybe he's just keeping quiet to himself. So his start position, he's like this. Is he meditating? She's like a journey of a thousand miles. So if you want him to do something like that, then even when he does something like that, my head is going to go down when my hand comes up, right? And then my hand, my head is going to go up with the hand, like that, and then back down. A journey of a thought. Maybe my eyebrows might raise. If, he's, if, he, if you want it deadpan, then that's boring, but sure, but just go through the motion yourself. A journey of a thousand miles. Now, I'm somebody who would because it's animated, it's not live action, I would start with a little turn here. So a journey. So rather than just having the body stiff and going like that, remember it's animation, I would have him like do a little bit of a lean before bringing his hand up, right? So it's like a journey of a thousand miles. And then I would circle this hand begins with a single step, right? So it's like, rather than just put the hand put the hand down and lift the hand up, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So this is just an arc going around and bouncing, like a pendulum spin, which we learn in the basics archive. So when you plan out the movement, you act it out, but because we know animation law, and we don't just look at live action footage, we think about animation arcs. So we say, okay, well, this hand is going to circle. Well, how am I going to arc into the next thing? I'm going to break the wrist and do that. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to think anticipation. Law of anticipation, maybe we go up before the hand comes down. Maybe he breathes. He doesn't have to circle. Maybe he goes a journey of a thousand. Maybe before he, do, he breathes in, like a journey of a thousand miles. So it's just a little up down if you want to make it less circular, right? A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And then as the hand rotates this way, the head rotates the other way as, as we go like that. So you can say a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Now maybe the head, see, the head rotation will come towards the end. So it's like a thousand miles, eyebrows up. So it's very subtle. A journey of a th anticipation before, action with a with an eyebrow raise circle of the hand head bob like head bob right journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step but then this doesn't have to be all like this you could just have it like that then bring it down and up and through again right to stop it from being all like this right but you want to think of the arc continuing off screen. Don't think of him putting his hand down and bringing his hand back up like this, right? Arcing, the law of arcing, the slowing in and slowing up, then the finish, a single step, just like that. So those are things to think about because it's really boring. It doesn't really do anything in that regard. If you want to make it rock, you see you want to rock the exercise. Now we'll talk about mouth shapes with animals. So, you've got the usual A, E, A, right? We've got this A mouth shape, the basic A, right? We've got the basic E, right? Maybe the bottom teeth come in there. This is also I. Then we've got O. Right? I'm being very quick here. Right? Then we've got U. U. 
U or you know or U or W right right then we've got you could have that could also be U as well but then U could also be like this you know U then you've got the consonants which are often the teeth right then you've got L so you curl the top a little bit you got the teeth then you got the little L underneath like that la la right then mm and b all right right so so we've got those basic mouth shapes right so in an animal sense what you want to think about is the top muzzle so you have the eyes here now you think about the top muzzle like this right and then the cheek is here the jaw comes here on the bottom but you're gonna gonna just gonna have the cheek coming off here to to make that same shape so a would be like this right coming on the other side right, right. so a would be like that e right the top of muzzle so the top muzzle wouldn't really be doing much different on the E, but we'll make the smile a little bit wider and have a little bit less. Maybe have a little bit of a teeth, even if it's just the top teeth or whatever. E would be like this. Right? Then O. Right? O, you would do something a little bit different. Right? You'd, you'd have the muzzle come under like this, right? And there'd be all this space here. A E I O U, okay. Uh, let's do a woo, right? Right, so. That's one. You're going to have a little curl here like that, right? I exaggerated that bottom a little bit too much. Right. So you'd have something like that. Um, let's do the mouth together. The M, the B. Right. So. See, this being a super, I was a supervisor for CG animation, um, animation director, not supervisor, because I didn't know the program. But I would look at the animation and tell them what to do to make it better. And I would also help them draw the mouth shapes for the people rigging, right? So that's why I can, I can do this quite fast, because I would just explain to them um, on the screen. Sometimes I would draw on the screen. Uh, they had these funny pens. Um, so then you have the a uh, let's do the l let's have a bit you know, let's let's keep it generic right so the l the l would be pretty much the same but i'd curve the top of this just a little bit right just so it'll read you get the teeth then you have that little l so the same thing that applies to the human mouths applies to the animal mouths let's do the consonant right. bump 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 just like that you, if you if you get lost with the side you think of the front muzzle like this right like that right so and then you join the teeth right so if you ever get lost with the muzzle angle, right, just make a line like this, right, here, so going a little bit that way, right, so that way you can get your perspective on the muzzle, right. So, 
Hopefully that Pedro gives you a little bit of things to think about. Refer to this stream. Um, but the lip sync comes secondary, Pedro. Uh, the the actions of the body, I will say you really need to think about that. Uh, you don't have to do what I told you. But it might, you know, as you're easing into it, it might help you to just use that as a guide. Okay, we have Simon Bedouin with the standard walk. Another cycle down. I'll try to stay a bit more optimistic going forward. Sims seem to be moving and turning properly. It's been exciting to follow the lessons. Slowly picking up on some principles. I can't wait to see what... Good! Because right now this is pretty, pretty much spot on, Simon. This is looking great. His hand looks a little short as, we, as you try to foreshorten it. But it doesn't matter. We kind of lost the, the wrist. But that's just a drawing thing. Animation-wise, this is very, very nice. The timing, the fluidity, the arcs. The, I love the, the head angle. Um, the, the hips are definitely doing their thing. I love the way that you're actually <laughs> trying to understand it from the front. You're really taking these lectures from the basics archive on board uh, you're not just following step by step you're also even following my explanations so it's your subconscious is going to be benefiting there's not much i can say to you simon other than stellar job you know um, just keep keep on keep on that's how you're progressing in your animation just how this guy's walking so just keep on going i think you're you know, what would also keep your motivation up, I think some of the stuff that you learned from your previous animation course is definitely, I can see it's helping you because you're really, um, you're really taking to these lessons and capturing them quite accurately. These, these, are, these are really solid recreations. Um, Mage Burger, I'm disappointed with these sketches of this design. I don't understand why your burger has um i've been ignoring dimension and appeal mostly been depending on chance for quality but i truly believe i have got a better grasp of him down i don't understand i i don't understand why your burger has these kind of pants like that he's got these kind of like sultan shoes but if he's a burger he just looks he just looks like a guy mage and i know you're ignoring dimension but I think dimension is pretty important. You've got another drawing of him, and I'll, I might have a little go um, at some point. Hung Ming Hui, this lecture took a while because I relished on a couple of frames and slow ins and slow outs. The smear was a bit experimental on the smear itself. Okay, so you embellished the smear. Now, need I even bother going to YouTube for this? It looks like another stellar recreation from Hung Ming Hui of the complete pendulum spin which which is what he's been following from the basics archive um, yeah the only thing I would say about embellishing the spin um, everything else that you follow, followed from the lecture you've done immaculately um, the slowing in the, this is this is what you learn in the training archive this is the consolidation after you've done the ball and pendulum the only thing I would say is, is as you consolidate, you yeah, you do come out of it with slow. You do kind of slow that smear down. But because you've really gone out to town on the smear, that when you come out of it, it feels, it, it just comes out of it a bit quick and goes back to the string. Uh, it, you know, it's a, but then again, it's a smear. You want it, people to see it's a smear. I'm not the kind of person that says it's got to be subtle. But this whole thing was about playing. So uh, I can't begrudge you for that. O overall, this has been really, really, uh, you know, that slow in at the end is immaculate. Um, fantastic work, Hung Ming Hui. I think this guy has just turned 18. You know, he's been in the library since he was 16. Um, incredible work. Um, Akawa I went back and created some new thumbnails for my dialogue test. Good. Being very, very... Uh, I know you're trying to solve the character design here, Aka. Now, with the mouth shapes, um, I think you're putting too much effort on the mouth uh, trying to get the 3D mouth, Akau. 
and it's going to it's going to kind of hurt um, a little bit because actually your head drawing isn't bad. I like the way you're getting the the structure, but I think you're you're looking at your mouth in the mirror and you're thinking too much about it. So let's do a little let's let's give you another little bit of help about the mouth, right? So let's say that you want a big, wide open mouth and it's a person. Let me, I mean, I'm not going to draw you this time. I'm just going to draw like a, a standard guy, right, yelling, right? And we want, a, we want a more realistic guy yelling. So I'm going to tone down the expressions, right? So... His maxilla portion is going to be here, and his skull is going to be here, right? So we're going to open that mouth, and we're going to think about the, the skull, right? The mandible, which is going to be here, right? Just like this. Now, I'm not really too concerned about the mouth at the moment. It's also the shapes around the mouth that create the mouth. What you're doing at the moment, Akau, is you're just drawing the lips, right? So it's the shapes around the mouth, right? Don't know why I had to do his eyes out of whack. That control the mouth. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to Also, the nostrils will get affected, right? Like this. Now, we're going to think about the basic shape of the mouth first, right? Which is going to be something like this. Then we're going to think about the sections of the mouth, right? And we're going to think about the Remember where I said to make the lips like a ring around the mouth, right? Like that. Then we think about the teeth sitting in there, right? So the four incisors. Then we've got the four incisors hair, the canines, right? Now, here's what makes the mouth shape. You see, there's, the mouth isn't so big on the face, right? It's sitting in here, but what makes the mouth shape is all these things coming around it if you want to go more real, right? You can even put a little fold of flesh hair like this. All these kind of things make the mouth shape what it is. Bring that ring up there around there more often. So if we look at that, we have got a mouth shape. It needs some tidying, but I'm not going to bother. I think I've illustrated my point. <clears throat> We've got a mouth that's big and that's expressive, but it isn't. Um, it doesn't feel like it's kind of pasted on. The, you got to think about how the other aspects of the. I know it's like you've lined it up with inside the eyes, but it feels really huge. Because it, it's it's like a character itself on the face. You need to think about the creases and folds around it, and maybe tone it down a little bit. Because his front teeth look like they're kind of like doing an alien, like they're pushing through the lips and about to shoot out through the lips. And we don't want that. We want it to feel natural, right? Um, so exaggeration is good, but we want it to feel. Um, natural in that regard so think about that uh, maybe make some studies of your own mouth which you probably have been doing but then think about the sh the skin around the mouth because even when we look at this yizma character it's a cartoon character and it's been toned down but they've got a few choice lines at places around the mouth right to help sell it right Bum, bum, bum. Okay, yeah, so Mage Burger, this was your trotting run. And to be honest, I'm not going to go to YouTube because it looks fairly accurate to the test. He does feel a little long like a sausage dog there. Um, but other, other than that, you've actually married the two together pretty nicely. He could go a little higher off the ground. 
He could go a little higher off the ground. He feels like he's kind of not really going up and down so much. Uh, so there's not much up down. But the body mechanics are working um, really well. The arcs are working really well. Um, you've pretty much nailed it. Um, there's a little bit of a dance on that ear. It's not quite cycling back to the start at the beginning. I can see that happening there. The tail's working nicely though. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's overall that's pretty good. Paul has oh Paul has already come in with his first test. Um, now Paul, this is looking fine. There's not much I can say about it. Um, you've you've you, Paul has saved up his money. Uh, I think it's hard for him because he's I think he's from Africa and it shows he's very very dedicated. He saved up his money to to study from real animator training, so I'm going to make sure I give him um, a little bit of extra attention, just because I know I know for the past few years Paul has been saving just for the basics archive, and um, uh, thank you, Paul. Um, I'm thank you for putting your trust in real animator training. I know it's been difficult for people who don't live in uh, Western uh, countries. To afford my training because my training is priced for me to survive in the west and um, it's very fairly priced but even that is even that is difficult for people outside so thank you for that for putting your trust in real animator training i'll make sure i'm sure it won't let you down and i'll make sure that if you post in here i will do my utmost to take note of your posts because um, i know what a strain that has been on you and i respect that so thank you um first if you're gonna post hair paul don't animate all the way to the bottom of the screen because it's or to the top of the screen because it's hard for me to see and plus it's it doesn't look as nice you know and already you're gonna learn a little bit more about framing that's not really a, a major thing though but it's major for me because if i pause the video and i get the ball in the middle of all the bar and all the play and all the what balls or whatever sign i can't see what's happening right so it's important if you present your work with the chance of me to look at it not to go right to the top and right to the bottom of the screen um this is feeling good i do feel that maybe because of you because your your um why is that why am I not able to there we are because there's such a great distance more of a distance than mine your bounce is looking a lot quicker and I'm feeling the the stretch I'm feeling I'm seeing too much of this pose maybe because of the distance all right I'm gonna slow it down in a minute I'm seeing I'm see when I look at that ball I'm literally physically seeing the squash pose um, we need to f we need to feel it more than see it. Now I know that you pretty it's not hard to follow along to this lecture, and you're an intelligent man, and this is not a difficult thing to do. So I know that you pretty much followed exactly what I've told you to do in the lecture. But I already see the problem here. I already see the problem. But good for you for trying. Um, can you see how big the ball is here, right? And can you see how big the ball is here? Your, your squash pose has gained in mass, right? Um, now, we don't care too much about volume control here. It's about learning the principles and the laws, which is what you have done quite well because you're, you're slowing in and slowing out. Your ball has nice spring. It's got squash and stretch, so well done. But if you are going to deform the ball, you've got to think about it being the same piece of meat right so if it's this big in a neutral pose it can the the, distrib the the weight has to be mass has to be distributed evenly so when it stretches again we don't really see your stretch pose and um, we feel too much of your squash pose but it's got to kind of fit within this if you're doing something extreme or rubber even that won't really make sense unless you're really playing with the timing and then doing something which we haven't even talked about yet so um let me look at your stretch pose 
Yeah, your stretch pose is very small compared to your squash pose. Your stretch pose is actually good. It feels like the same ball. So as we come up here, dum 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 dum. It gets a bit big here, right? But good for you for drawing and not just uh, cutting out. Now in the video I cut out to save time, but you didn't. And well done for you for that. Good. Yeah, so that's the only thing I would say is the slight issue with that. Is also maybe there's too much of a distance and it's feeling very, it's, I mean, it's spongy, it's springy. It's a good bouncing ball, but this is where it all starts. So um, keep an eye on the distribution of mass on that squash and stretch. It's working, but it could work better because we feel, we, we, we see it more than feel it. Um, Angela Walker, more on shape simplification. I wonder if she addressed the things I told her. Oh, good. Yes. Looking good, Angela. Let's see that neck. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, there could be a little bit more deformation in the neck to give it that rubbery feel. But for you, Angela, I would say leave it. This is this is really really good. Um, I wonder if you have in you haven't in betweened it yet. No, yeah. All that's left is for you to in between it. Um. For the most part, this has been a hugely successful test for you, Angela. There's still little things in there, uh, orcs, that could be better, but I'm not going to dwell on those. I think as I've been watching your journey, this has been a massive gain for you. Um, so let's, let's, uh, let's in between this and move on. Um, we don't want to stick around too much on something. And then hopefully what needs to be ironed out you'll start to iron out in the next exercise. So for you, this is actually a extremely solid piece of uh, work. The line work, hopefully when you start to clean up as you go, your line work will improve. But at the moment, don't take that as a negative thing. Um, I'm just telling you that there is still things you're going to have to work on. But for you, this is extremely crisp line work. And this is a massive change compared to the stuff you were posting before. So well done. Let's in between it and get it more fluid and looking even nicer and then move on to the next one. Well done on that. Um, ba -ba -bum. Posting your own stuff is not pro prohibited chicken scratching, but it has to be kind of re relevant to what's in the group. I don't, one thing I don't, uh, I don't ban the posts, but if people just post stuff that's that's their own anime fight and they want people to follow them and they go please support my channel i'm i'm not going to comment on it because that's not what this group's about i'm not here to it's not about people looking for free advertising for likes and subscribes it's here for serious people trying to work and improve their skills so i'm going to give my attention to those people to to those things so if people are just posting things for likes and shares if, you, if you're going to post something that's your own project, fine. But then share your thoughts about the project. Do some work. Type in the comment, oh, I did this and I tried to accomplish this and I tried to do that and I looked at this. And then, then I'll look at it and go, well, this person is seriously trying to approve and they're reaching out for me for help. But if it's just like, yeah, check out my channel, guys. Look at all the work I'm doing or look at my new tutorial. Those ones I will ban because I'm the I'm the tut I'm the guy giving the tutorials here, and there ain't nobody in existence that can do it better than me. So I'm not gonna like tolerate that stuff on 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 the walls of my group unless it's a tutorial on software because I don't do those. But you feel feel free. It's there's nothing is prohibited, but it has to be relevant. Um, posts in the group has to be relevant. Um, and if I'm going to have give feedback, then it has to catch my attention as being a worthy post of my feedback. Um, Kamin's basic walk cycle. Let's have a look at this. Um, not bad. I do feel that although his pelvis is working, his legs are a little floppy and there's no real weight to them. Um, you see, he's, he's picking his knee up, but the knee arc 
is kind of going up and down and up and down. You see his knee is up here, right? And then rather than the arc changing, his femur lengthens, right? Femur lengthens. And then rather yes, his this pelvis tilts, but it doesn't go down enough, right? And then the femur gets shorter, so we don't feel the bend in the leg as the weight comes on the down, right? Don't feel enough of a change between this and this into this, right? Maybe even, there's, even if there's a subtle change, which I remember there is in this, there still has to be, you still have to feel the difference. At the moment, the major problem with your walk, you're hitting all the right things. You've taken everything on board, the pelvic rotation, the pelvic tilt, you know, the pelvic pelvis going up and down you've understood all those things but you haven't your leg your knee joint is kind of going up the body and down the body and it's affecting the the walk so it doesn't really feel like it's got any weight it just feels like it's flowing right it's just flowing liquid kind of effect we don't need to care about volume, but we need to care about arcs. And this is why arcing sorts volume out. Because if that knee is coming up, then that arc is going to go up. And then that arc is going to go down. And the knee is going to have to follow that position in the arc, right? So then everything else is going to move in relation to that arc. So think of the ball. And this is the femur. And this is the calf, the, gas, the tibia, right? Right? So now it's going up even more, right? So they will trail behind. They don't have to, right? This is the foot, right? Right? So then this is going here. This is going here. Now this is going down. So these guys are going to have to trail back down, right? Or in, in, in some cases straighten out. But you need to think about the arc of that rather than, you know, in order to, to to get that out so it's not a not a bad attempt at all kevin but it it just lacks the weight right same with the upper and lower torso while the pelvis is doing the tilting and moving around there's not enough up down in relation to the torso up here so it just feels there's this squash and stretch in the midsection it's a very subtle thing you haven't done anything wrong. What's happened is, is you've followed the exercise and you've built some brain cells, right? But if you move on to the... the don't do it again. This is good enough because you're going to do this walk six times, right? That's what real animated training is all about. Doing the same thing over and over again, just in a slightly different way to keep your conscious mind interested while your subconscious builds those essential brain cells. So the plus is, is that hip rotation is really nice. The shoulder rotation is nice, right? So there's a lot of good takeaways in this. You've got a nice uh, drag on the wrists, right? So overall, it's a good good effort. Um, just move on to the standard uh, walk, and hopefully you'll start to get more weight into there. Now, here again it is. Um, Mage, I don't understand. It's your design, but I really don't understand. I'm going to do a quick sketch of what I think, right? So if his top head is a burger bun, then you need to really play with the fact that his top head's a burger bun. And if this is all lettuce causing um, beef, like a beard around him, then you need to play around with the fact that that's lettuce, right? And then maybe there's a, I don't know if there's a cheese, if, if the cheese is there or whatever is his mouth, right? I don't know. It's a very strange idea that you've got going on here. But you're just putting mouth in there. Um, so I wouldn't, I, w I would, I would within his, I would put a tomato there as, as his mouth maybe, right? Like that, like maybe that, that could be like a, a tomato as, as some lips, right? And then he's got the burger bun hair like this, but you could just put like, I don't know, some glasses on there. But the burger bun, I would I would really play on the fact that that's a burger bun, right? Now, in relation to his, um, his body, he's a burger. So 
I would I would have him stout, right? I would think about his, uh, you know, you've given him like these Sultan style trousers. So I would think about the Sultan in Aladdin, maybe. I would think about maybe something like that. And he's got those those little shoes. So I would I would start thinking about something like this, right? So let's go back to the flower sack. And let's try that again, right? So let's go back to like the flower sack. Like this, right? And that'll be like his belly out this way. And then the burger bun will sit at the top of his head like this. Maybe he'll have some cheese to emphasize that he's a burger. And then the lettuce will come down here, giving him the beard, right? So he's got all this stuff here. Then the hands like this. And maybe his pants will just have something kind of like Sultan style pattern on them, which will look like a, some burgers and fries, like, like that to give the sub, subconscious idea of some kind of burgers and fries kind of thing right so and then he's got his tomato mouth right here like that's like a bottom lip or something and then i would i would i would um i'd personally give him round shades like that with eyebrows if you're gonna have him in shades i don't know right i would just think about appeal and I would think about, well, burgers are, are, are round things, so I would want him to have round shapes, right? So maybe think about that. I know that you're a lot better than this, Mage, but it's up to you. It's your design. Um, it's, you know, you might be learning all those Disney things that I'm teaching you, but, you know, when you joined this group, you, you didn't know any better. You was, you was into, Bo, Bo, what is it, Bojack Horseman or whatever that RP Horseman or whatever that god-awful looking thing is, and Ricky and Morty and all those nasty looking things. So it, it's not for me to tell you how to design your characters or what you're going for, but it seems to me that if you can do stuff like this, um, which clearly shows that you're you're quite competent at, at, at draftsmanship to handle interesting shapes and things that you can you can certainly do better than this mage. That's that's what I'm I'm just giving you a bit of friendly advice there. Um, Hung Ming Hui's uh, basic walk cycle. Um, I think he's being sarcastic with this one was a joy to in between because it was on once. He's also following the notes in the lecture. So again, this is a little bit better than, uh, or more successful than Kevin's in that regard. But Kevin's was stronger in the fact that he, Kevin maintained a better volume on the hips. Your pelvic box isn't quite working. Uh, it's growing and shrinking in size. And th that, that matters because we need to see the top and bottom of that pelvic box, right? Which is why we have that line there to keep it in volume so this side and this side are more or less the same you know and then we see the underside of it like this right then we see it rotating so you're you're growing a lot on the top and then shrinking it down and then you're trying to do a little bit of the angle of the pelvic box so there's a little bit of an issue with that also, your legs have a little bit more of a bend in them, but you've kind of separated them like that and you've animated those lines separating so we don't really feel the knee the knee as well. Um, but we do have a little bit more weight in the bending and straightening of them, which is good. Uh, but here we, we can really see that the pelvis is probably the thing that needs the most attention. The head is almost right. There's a little dink in the movement at the top there. Um, uh, the shoulders are nice. Uh, the arms are lovely. The torso is awesome. The arc of the feet is absolutely spot on. Um, 
Yeah, this is a much better attempt in that regard, but in other regards, uh, you, you know, it has got a uh, certain weakness, particularly in the pelvis. The pelvis is actually the thing that is the most important aspect to understand when it comes to human locomotion. So don't redo this. Just go on to the standard walk and pay attention to that a little bit more next time. I know you like to work clean and tight, but it would probably be more beneficial if you loosened up a bit and got those things right um, in the next one. Here's some anatomy practice I've done with yoga poses. I've only studied it up to the lumbar in the archive. I'll post my bone study soon. Very good. Very good. Would maybe tone down the coloring and shading of the person so we can see the anatomy. This one is not bad. Um, see, at the moment it is quite stiff what you're doing, but I don't care because you're familiarizing yourself with the bones and you're trying to see what the bones are doing. Um, this is a better one. This is more successful because you're actually trying to distort the scapula uh, in accordance to how it might be distorted in that pose. Uh, again here I like the fact that you're pinching the scapula together. Um, with the spine it's good to just think of the spine as as this kind of shape, right? So then as you're doing those kind of things you're always remembering how that is going on the rib cage will be kind of like a solid thing, but it has this shape, so it'll help you with your perspective on certain poses, right? So many people that do this, they tend to just have the spine as this thing and just draw all that in there and put all the detail and that. It doesn't matter in the long run because you're just training yourself to understand the bone structure, but it's good to train yourself to think in terms of dimension um, it's good that you're working in a macro way as well as a, a micro way. I can see how you're handling the rib cage in that regard. Um, yeah, there's not much I can say other than uh, what, what's in the videos and you just need to keep uh, going through it. It's, it's good stuff. Three hours, 11 minutes. Okay. Crystal has posted something about character design that I might do on a different um, day. Uh, Selena, Nina, and Adeline Ong have got their posts. Okay, I might save Crystal's post for another thing because it's about character design. It might make a good video. Um, let me look at Selena's last. I will look at Adeline Ong's uh, standard walk first because it's I love the way she's trying to put a little bit of design, anime design on this character. Oh, it's almost looking quite feminine there, with the slinky little midsection. Um, now, because you've changed the design a little bit, has that affected the animation in some way? I guess it has only in the fact that it looks a little awkward with the square squash and stretch of the hip of the midsection uh, which would be the quadratus lumborum and the core section the uh, external obliques but actually um, it's very very good and I like what you've done with the knees you really know you 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 you've done something good with the knees there so we don't get that issue what was happening before um, the only thing I will say, maybe because you wanted to play subtle, and you wanted to make this work in 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 your in a, in a, in with your kind of anime style design, you've toned the head down a little bit so we don't see so much of the underside of the chin. I see what you've done. It's all good. It's all good. It, it you know, the library is theirs for you to work as you choose. There is a li there is a slight risk of. Uh, playing around with my designs as you try to make it work with your own as a beginner 
but it depends on the experience. I've had people join my library who, I say, already work at Disney, who have worked at Cartoon Network, who've worked at um, Nickelodeon. I've had people who've been to Don Bluth's course. I've had people from Animation Mentor. I've had people from CalArts. So as long as you kind of know what you're doing, then then change the design at your own risk, okay? I would say here that it's pretty much paid off for you. The head does feel a little bit uh, off in the placement of the neck in, in relation to the shoulders. It feels like that the that it's kind of sliding if we saw the it from top view. That would be the neck socket and the neck socket's kind of sliding on either side while it's walking as opposed to staying constant in the middle. That's the one thing I, 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 I see that's a little bit off with it. But everything else is kind of nice. The wrists are a little tight on the dry on the drawback, but again, maybe you're trying to tone it down for your anime esque character. Um, oh, so we the the wrists are a little stiff there uh, in that regard. Now I know that my wrists themselves are a lot stiffer in this exercise than they were in the basic walk, which was intentional. But I guess when we look at it with a more of a humanoid thing, it looks a little even more, a little bit more stiffer. But that said, Adeline, um, there's nothing really I can say um, about this uh, other than the things I've said. It's actually rather good. And if you want to continue with with your own humanoid like this, as long as it's as long as it works, as long as it is not too different, and as long as it works and it's it you you basically retain the information that you're getting from the training exercise then yeah c c keep going it's uh it's pretty good to me it's it's looking pretty good um all right so we have selena nina with her amazingly cute uh exercise that she's doing another update on my flower sack test i followed the feedback uh, last review stream then tried to do more thumbnails I decided to get a rough idea of what I kind of had in my head I did only extremes put it on sixes to slow it down I had an urge to want to fix it more but I remembered an interview from James Baxter he mentioned when anime mentioned he would do the common mistake of cleaning up his drawings and not showing his scene at a rough pass yes I would do the same thing and then having to redraw a lot anyway so I didn't want to make that bad habit make that a habit i promise myself i can always yeah that's a good idea selena the only thing is that sometimes if i'm not able to review um every week uh, you may be waiting around i love the i love the mini mouse bow study it's really cute i'm gonna have a look at this now on youtube I had a little look earlier. Now the best bit for me is this. I absolutely love the the fixing of the bow at the beginning. Amazing. And the little bit of the straightening of the skirt. Wonderful, right? Gets into pose, get does the twirl three times. Now it all works and you've thumbnailed it out great. But here's the thing that would make it work even better. I had a little look before because I couldn't resist looking at this cute drawing. So I knew what I was going to tell you, right? So at the moment when she does the turn, when she does the twirl, it's like just a basic loop of the same twirl, right? But wouldn't it be nice if the first twirl, she kind of twirled um, at this height, right? Then at the second twirl, she stretched a bit more and twirled at a little bit more of a height. And there was a little bit more of a spin on her skirt. Kind of like the Fantasia mushrooms, right? And then on the third twirl, she basically twirled more like a squash, right? Or maybe it should be four twirls and she goes back to this and then into the squash. But let's do three. So then she twirls into a squash pose and the squirt and this thing is even higher, right? And then she she finishes with squash and stretch in, in that finished position that she's on. 
So here, you see it's just like one twirl, two twirl, three twirl, you looping, right? Then from this, oh, okay, four twirls, yeah. So then I was, yeah, four twirls. Like, so then, but then here, Selena, when we come to this final thing, she then, she then, squ she then squashes down and then stands back up into this pose, right? And then, or, and then like, gestures again and hits this finishing pose remember squash and stretch remember the breakdowns that we do the little breakdowns we do to make things more interesting going beyond the pose hair coming up um, here we go uh, down before going up right so remember all these little things selena so remember, rather than just doing three of the same loop, which is kind of boring, especially especially for a fun character like this, have her get taller than small, tall than small again before getting out of it. Maybe then she'll pop up a little taller out of it again, right? Up, down, up, down, up, down. That kind of thing makes it always a little bit more um, interesting in that regard. Okay, so that is that. Uh, hopefully that will help you move forward uh, with that test, uh, Selena. And now I'm going to um, pretty much, yeah, that's that. Uh, if you want to join this group, feel free to join this group. Also, don't forget, uh, go to ambanimation.com, uh, sign up to the Real Animator Training Library and transform your lives like all these people are doing. Now, um, I'm going to go... And I'm going to, before I go, I'm going to remind you all about this. Well, I'm doing this for my own sake. I like looking at my own work. We did this a little bit earlier in the stream. If you missed it, have a look. The audience asked me to do a head turn featuring Yzma from Emperor's New Groove. And we did that. All right. Um, now, before, before I, I go, go three, three hours, hours 21, 21 minutes. minutes, let me have a quick look at the chat see what people were saying um, people talking about what they like Ryan G Ryan Jean how are you Akau and chicken scratching are getting on I'll study more some running cycles by recording my brother running. It might be just better to just uh, understand a basic run cycle. A Bluth inspired animation in the vein of 1980s sword and sorceries would be very cool. I think people would like to see that sexy women's care. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, look out on my channel. The thing is, is, again, I'm doing this with feedback from you because of the whole little red thing. Um, I thought what I was doing was absolutely everybody's going to love this. They're going to want to pay to see it and I'm going to finish it. Didn't quite work out that way. Never mind. I created some great content and I learned, we learned some valuable lessons. So here I'm going to ask you guys. The thing is, is Bluth, he put forward this thing. Oh, we'll raise $500,000 and I'll give you a, a, a trailer or, and then we'll make a movie, right? from that so people get all excited and they get their rewards but they get no end product right or their end product is they get the few people who paid got the trailer right but then there is no film the films being a live action thing right so i'm saying would now i'm asking you okay because it makes life easier for me as an anime as a filmmaker to focus on the actual film and spend the resources on the film if we raise budget, a lot of those budgets are going to be created into rewards and all those kind of things. Would you just be happy to just say, okay, well, here, here's the, the money to make the project. All we want is the project. And we don't care about rewards. Just give us the, the damn project and then put it on YouTube so everybody can enjoy it for free. That's my thing. It's, it makes it a whole lot easier than all this reward system and all that and then everything can be used for the project um, obviously the people including myself will need to live and need to be paid for what we're doing but ultimately the stuff goes into the project so 
keep an eye out on my channel while I'm doing this tailspin thing cleaning up and in betweening it is very boring so I've been throwing out this uh, I've been doing some concept sketches I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because if, it, if, if, if it's not what the people are interested in then we're going to leave it but keep an eye out on my channel and I'm going to put some concept art to get people excited to say look would you do you guys really want a dragon's lair okay because I'll give you a dragon's lair I'll give you a 20 minute dragon's lair or a 10 minute dragon's lair regarding on how much we can raise would you be up to paying for it no I can't use his designs but come on you've all seen the way I draw you've all seen how close my drawings are to that so you're gonna pretty much get that but anyway no point talking about it keep a look on my channel um, and I'll be updating it in the post sections I'll be posting some artwork you'll be seeing some of the character designs some of the suggestions I'm gonna fuse Dragon's Lair with Space Ace to create a new fantasy project and if you if you want to see that fun little thing we'll get Real Animated Studios up and running so I'm going to be putting those questions to you soon. It's all feedback for me anyway. Um, bum, bum, bum. And the thing is, is you've seen how fast I can animate, right? So we've got we've got people ready to just take that. Oh, I've got travesty and animate. I've got Charlene Giles. I've got Live Fantasy. I've got Selena Nina. I've got Akal the warrior I've got loads of people who've been trained up in the library ready to take be taking my key animation and my tie down animation in betweening it cleaning it Aaron AOX getting it all out there creating the content for you guys to see this thing is just waiting for the right project and it's gonna happen um, Cameron's had to go. I haven't been watching Netflix that much. Silver Sun, just uh, just the things. I, I I mainly watch what my wife wants <laughs> wants to watch, and then I lock myself away and draw and animate. Um, there we go. Anything sword and sorcery is popular like fairy tales for adult children. Fairy tales even were, origina were originally made for adults, not just kids. Yeah, well, we'll see. But at the moment, I'm just making things for people who grew up in the 80s that kind of like things the way they were, that aren't interested in seeing uh, particular changes to the program uh, to fit into a, a kind of movement of where society is going they just want to see what they've always seen and they're they're cool with that and um, that's the kind of thing um, uh, that we're going to do with the dragon's lair thing and most of my content most of my content is going to be about the stories i want to tell and they're just stories i don't care uh they're, they're they're mostly the kind of stories that interest me they don't really have anything they're just stories I'm not trying to say anything else they've got morals and ideology based on you know good and bad nothing to do with current ideas of what's popular and what's trending and this is outdated or that's not outdated well I happen to like some outdated films designs and stories and if I like them then I'll make them for the sole reason that I like them and for the sole reason that plenty of other people like them so it's not about um, debating or doing anything like that it's just like well people love dragon's lair people love dragon's lair for a reason and we're not going to change the script we're going to make something similar to it because that's what works if it ain't broke don't fix it um, that's basically what it is but anyway more on that as and when I start I'm able to find the time to create a nice little poster and concept for that and if, if, if people don't want it they won't want it but this is what the fun of it is um, this is the fun of moving real animator training into the next phase real animator training will always exist but moving it into real animator studios because now the more and more you're seeing we're getting more and more awesome people 
finally, who went through the initial phase when I built this library, the first five years I built this library, the early adopters of the training library, they're now, some of them are now ready to aid and assist me. Um, and uh, if we find the right project, then that's what's going to happen. Okay, then people, I will see you all on the next live stream. Keep working hard and remember, always, always, especially to yourself, keep it real. Bye-bye. See you on the next live stream. Over and out.